Friday night. Yes. Oh, man. James in the house. What's up, brother? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, just, just a few quick announcements. Um, I, I messed up. I messed up um, when doing my videos. I should have done Cleveland um, this week, not not Detroit. And so next week it's going to. Well, actually, let me let me rephrase that. The next five is going to be in this order, Washington, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, and Seattle. Um, they're doing some work in, I just found out um, about an hour, or actually about two hours ago. Uh, they're going to do some work in my apartment um, Monday and Tuesday. So next week's videos um, will be delayed. I just don't know the extent. Um, I'll, I'll figure some things out. Uh, so, so um uh, so I apologize because I should have done Cleveland this week in Detroit uh, last week. Um, man, James is here. He's excited. He's excited. Party time. Keys! Uh, Dan, stop snorting lines and get the show started. I'm pretty jacked up. I just I just slammed energy drink. I just slammed an energy drink. Um, I'm, I'm pretty jacked up. I'm halfway through the hall of fame game. I, I, I know what's going to happen. I, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny too, because it, it got me thinking Kellen Mund was a third round pick. I really liked, I thought that he might be a candidate to take over, um, when Kirk Cousins leaves, which I think could be next year. I, I can't remember if it's next year or this year his contracts up, but, um, He's now in Cleveland or Cincinnati starting a third round pick. And it got me thinking about Malik Willis and he's a third round pick. Does he become a starter? Is he on another team? I, I kind of think that he may be a guy that um, in preseason, there could be a move. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting when you're a third round pick and you're a quarterback, do you become a starter like Desmond Ritter did? Or are you on team number two, like Kellen Mund and, um, Kellen Mund was a guy I, I really liked a lot coming out of Texas A&M. Really liked him a lot. So, One Pride 40 says, death taxes. Dan thinking about Big Bertha's. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Dan doing some large marks. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, oh, God, funny is not the correct word. I kept on seeing all these things about Paul Rubens and honoring Pee Wee Herman. I was like, are they making a movie or something? I found out he died. So um, I was like, oh, well, that explains it. Um, he's in one of my, there's a movie called Blow, Johnny Depp, um, Penelope Cruz, Paul Rubens. Uh, I don't know his name, but he, the real big guy from, from My Name is Earl. I can't think of it. He's been a bunch of movies. Um, Blow, underrated movie. Paul Rubens is in it. Really pretty good movie based off true story. It's a good movie. I saw that. Yeah, it was a good video, man. It, it was a very good video. Um, it, it was funny. I went on uh, the Luke G show and um, it, it's kind of funny because I knew Detroit Lions expectations were high and I went on Luke G show and it's, 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 I, I had no idea. I had no idea, uh, no idea how. And so I'm, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to try to get a hold of Luke because I was going to save it for when Luke comes on. Uh, that was the other uh, thing I wanted to talk about. I did confirm Luke G will be here um, Tuesday before the Chiefs Lions. We're going to break down Chiefs Lions. I'm going to issue a challenge to Luke and to all Detroit Lions fans. But I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do it on his show. I'm going to do it on his time. Do it on his, his show and his time. So I don't want to issue a challenge. But I have a challenge to all Detroit Lions fans. So, uh, Dan, I don't know if you saw it or not. But over the last week, I posted every play from the Super Bowl on Twitter. Every play summarized in slow-mo. Whole field slippage excuse doesn't hold well. It, no, I, I never, I never believe that uh, Eagles fans keep clamoring about it, and and it's just comical. I mean, you play. It, I'll never forget. Uh, 
I, these are kind of large. They're really far apart, but bear with me here because it, it's both related to the Eagles. Is um, the Fog Bowl? Do you remember the Fog Bowl? Um, a lot of people thought that was the Eagles' best team under Buddy Ryan, and and uh, they interviewed Buddy Ryan, and um, you know they're trying to get Buddy, you know, to be Buddy Ryan, who was who was phenomenal on TV. You know, put him in front of the cameras. There are very few people I liked more entertaining. Whether you liked him, hated him, he's entertaining as hell, and um. They are like, hey, you know, should you, should, you know, don't you think you should cancel the game? He goes, why? Why? It was the fog only when we were on the field. You know, you know both teams played, and it's football. That's what it is. And 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 Buddy Ryan, of all people, you know, who lost the fog bowl, um, probably could use that as an excuse. He he never used it as an excuse. And I remember I remember him saying that though, and it, it stood out. So anytime I hear field conditions, weather. Um, I just think of Buddy Ryan saying, hey, oh, my God. Oh, Chris Clegg. Oh, man. So me and <laughs> yeah, there's only so much I can tell about our history, Chris. <laughs> uh, me, me and Chris have known each other for a long time. His brother, Chad, actually works a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, both him and his brother, uh, two, two really awesome people. Really, really awesome people. I think I don't think Chris would mind if I reveal this. Uh, he um, about a month or two ago bought his dream house, and and it, it's awesome. I I just took a look at it. Like I, I like he should he sent me the link, like the Zillow link. Took a look at it, and I've been meaning like to check it out in a little more detail. Phenomenal house, and and it's kind of neat. They're great, great people, and they both subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I'm I'm no I've known Chris for thirty five years. Is that, is, yeah, yeah. Uh, DTR had a good game last night. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I haven't even watched the play yet. I, I watched, there was a lot to like about Kellen Mund, and then I saw him throw a really bad interception, and it got me thinking. Now I know why. I'm, well, you know, it really got me thinking that, um, I wonder how much Kirk Cousins was involved in getting rid of him or because I remember Cousins was not happy about that pick. Um, you know, it was a third round draft pick. Uh, you know, the Vikings were just a few players from getting over to hump. This was in the Zimmer area era uh, when they, when they drafted him and um, him and Zimmer didn't get along famously. And uh, it, it was just kind of interesting because, like, if you watch it, you can see the arm strength, you can see the athleticism, and then you see the bad interception. It's like, well, that's, that, you can't make a – you can't throw a ball that badly. And, um, yeah. Dish finished making a video that includes every Eagles defensive play from the Super Bowl. Upload it to Google Drive, send you a link. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. Um I was going to say, I, 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 I could add it to the description. If you want to, I could post, I'll put a link to that on some of my videos. Um, Cause I, I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. And um, I, I, I just, I shake my head anytime somebody wants to say, um, Oh, it was the field. We would have won. And it's like, Chris Jones got a sack. You didn't. I mean, you know, so uh Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the over under on David Montgomery touchdowns this season? Five and a half. I want to take the over. Um, I don't. Was that you who sent me that? I thought it, I thought it was one pride. Um, I thought it was one pride who sent me that. But if it was you, I, I want to give you credit. I love that bet because I actually think that if he stays healthy, he's probably on pace somewhere between ten to twelve. Uh, you have a really good offensive line. He's a big back. Uh, he, I think uh, two years ago, I think he had 12 last year. I think he had eight. I, I, I'm, I'm literally spitballing numbers. I may be way off, uh, but I, I love that bet. Was it, was it, it, I'm assuming you sent me that. I was thinking one probably did. By the way, all my social media links are listed below. Um, if you DM me stuff like this, give me 24 hours. Send me a friend request first. Um, it, I, I'm not sure how it is on Instagram. I know Facebook. Um, I still use Facebook. Um, I, I don't think you can send me a message and not be a friend. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know. I've been getting a lot of weird messages on Facebook. So um, I'm tempted to just kind of weed them out. But 
if you do send, send if you send me a message, send me a friend request first, and then then send me a message, uh, DM me. You know, actually, now I think about it, James. You sent me a message about being friends, so you can you can DM me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, send me messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't I won't reveal too much about what they do and and their personal details. But uh, Chris, uh, I think he'd be okay with this. So Chris used to uh, work at a restaurant. He was a server at uh, Garozo's and uh, it, it was named, um, the NFL used to put out like a thing about like each city and the place you have to go to eat. If, if you're coming in, you know, the, the watch the chiefs was Garozo. So, um, so he's like, it called Peterson, Marty Schottenheimer used to come in all the time. And he goes, yeah, man, they brought in this guy. Um, He's built kind of like a swimmer. He's not really like a football player. It's Tony Gonzalez something. And I said, is it Tony Gonzalez? He's like, yeah, that's it. It's Tony Gonzalez. And yeah, they they, they brought him in like a couple times. And and that's it was kind of neat. Got like some inside knowledge. Uh, Derek Thomas was there. He, he has a few Derek. Me and Chris actually have a couple Derek Thomas stories. <laughs> so um, I, I – um, I, I, I love Luke G and Luke G it was funny. I went on there and Luke G spent half the time defending me, but um, uh, yeah, I'm going to issue a challenge and I want to do it on his show. I want to run it by him first and then uh, it'll be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, Andy. Yeah, exactly. They really did. They really, they really did. They, they really did. So Keys says Andy and Andy put on masterclass in the Super Bowl total vindication Super Bowl 55 on my mind. And if you don't know what he means by Andy and Andy, Andy Heck is a former Chiefs, or actually, I'm sorry, he's a Chiefs offensive line coach, former NFL offensive lineman. His son, uh, if I remember right, did I get the player? I think his son uh, was drafted by Denver, or was it Houston? But but yeah, excellent offensive line, uh, offensive line coach, um, maybe an offensive coordinator in the near future near future not not for kansas city of course but uh one pride 40 says the hype is real and all of our game. oh yeah if you're not aware detroit lions have sold out every home game already there's now a waiting list the hype is real and um and um when i went on luke g show i had no idea I, I, I like, I, I had the scale of like one to 10. I was thinking the hype was like nine or 10. It's like 14 or something. It, it's crazy. They're not just drinking the Kool-Aid. They're huffing the paint. It, it It's big. It's big. I had no idea. I went on there and it was like, I was like, well, Hey, let me ask you about the, and uh, I kind of don't want to go into it. I, I kind of don't want to go into the conversation, but uh, um I brought up some things I thought was just common sense stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for you Lions fans. I feel like I'm, I'm insulting you, but um, I, I brought up something I just thought was kind of and, and Luke just no that you're wrong, Dan. This is this is how it is. Um, I got called Jersey Shore. I, I got called the pacifier, which I, afterwards. I, so after anytime I do a show with Luke G afterwards, one of these days. I'm going to have to like leave a recording on because what we talk about after the camera's off is, is usually a lot better. So um, me, Luke and Anthony were, were talking and um, and I'm going to include I'm going to include Anthony in the challenge as well. Uh, we, we were talking. And finally, after like, I was like, what the hell is the pacifier? And I was looking at that and he's like, oh, it's a Vin Diesel. So every now and then. I don't see it myself. I, I don't get it. It it I do shave my head. Um, I get I get um, told that I look like Vin Diesel. So the pacifier apparently is a Vin Diesel movie. Um, I don't I don't see it at all. I, I he meant it as an insult, which I I like once I found out because I was like the pacifier. What the hell are you talking about? And so any, anyhow. But uh, yeah, I had no idea like that. The, um... So yeah, I'm going to issue a challenge to Lions fan. I don't want to reveal it here, but all you guys that are Lions fans, um, uh, when I reveal it, I, I want y'all to get involved. I'm not going to buy a golf jersey. They're expensive. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to buy a golf jersey, but 
I am going to go on Luke G's show and eat a lot of crow. I'm going to take a lot of verbal abuse. I'm going to take a lot of verbal abuse on Luke G's show. Uh, I'm not going to buy a Lions jersey, though. Um, if I can get one decently priced, I may get like a Lions t-shirt or something and, and do that. But, yeah. Uh, Key says, remind me, oh, you know what? I will text you because I do got your number. I'll send you a text. And um, I I would love to have you on sometime in the near future. Uh, I'd love to get I'd love to get the whole back talk group on. Um, I really hope that Tuesday that when Luke comes on, I can hope I can have you and I would you know what to be honest with you, I, I'm not gonna do this because I think it'd be a little unfair. But I'd love to get you and Luke on opposite ends because uh, of um, I, I you guys just like to argue. I'd love to get you on opposite ends and I could just referee. But it's not fair because I'm a Chiefs fan. So, uh, but um, I hope that you you are there to listen to the Luke G arguments because he's expecting a Chiefs win. Or I'm sorry, he is expecting a Lions win, and I'm like, okay, game on then. All right, so. Uh, there are about half a dozen plays or so of slips, but most of them were offensive players, more Chiefs players. The main one for the Eagles, D. Mahomes also slipped bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, both teams were affected. I didn't get it. Andy's gameplay. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of um there's a lot of people I think Andy Reid's best coach in the NFL. I still think it's Belichick. I'm giving Belichick the benefit of the doubt, but um Andy Reid, uh, when everything's said and done, top 10 coach of all time. That, that, that All time. And it's one of the greatest Super Bowls ever played. One Pride 40, the hype is insane. I hope you're doing well. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, I haven't watched the game yet. Took the kids to the pool. Um, I, I, I know what's going to happen. So it, it's a little frustrating because um, – I hate watching game where I already know what's going to happen and I already have an opinion of my mind. I kind of don't like doing that. Um, when I watch a game, I like to get my own opinion. So I just go with the media says, you know, um, Zach Wilson only played for two series, which I was really surprised about. Um, the only player from, uh, Cleveland, they, they, they have a fourth round rookie, Dewan Jones, massive, tackle. I'm not exaggerating. I think he's like 370. Um, they talked about him a little bit. Um, you have a running back that I was very, very impressed with. And I, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, there, there's something else about Cleveland. Just, oh, David Bell. That's the guy I was thinking of. Uh, uh, David Bell um was he was a, he was there right away. I, I know he played almost all the first half and I thought he was positioning himself as a starter. That was a little interesting with the Jets. Um, I was told Nikai Beckton was going to play. He didn't play at the first unit. When I say first unit, you know, obviously Rodgers isn't playing. Um, but uh, Zach Wilson barely played. I, I was really surprised about that. And uh, Tim Boyle came in. I, I have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting to watch the second half, so. Zach Wills had a bad game. I I don't know. He had that long throw. Um, he had that long throw. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I'd have to disagree with you. I don't think he he had a bad game. Um, I I understand why you weren't impressed, but I didn't think it was a bad game. Um, I uh, I was really. I really want to see more of him, though. I I have no idea why they only left him in for two series. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't get up for this. So Key says wife was there too, seeing her in a swimsuit was better than watching. <laughs> uh, one pride forty. I'm doing great. I'm going to go watch the Troy Lions podcast party. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. That sounds really awesome. <laughs> the reason why Zach Wilson played so bad. Is <laughs> 
Oh God! This is, oh God! This, I I I look for. I'm about ten minutes behind on the comments, and so I apologize. But this is this is uh this is just <laughs> this is the reason why I do this. Slasher, what's up, brother? Oh man, how the hell Kamara get, only get three games, man? Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so so just to clarify, I should have let off of this, and I I'm I'm sorry, I. After three games, he has to reapply. And, and more than likely, usually when you have to reapply for um, to be able to play, uh, you usually get it. I, I don't remember a situation off the top of my head where if you had to apply, apply for reinstatement was the words I was uh, trying to think of. I was trying to spit out. Um, you have to reapply for, for reinstate. Apply for reinstatement. Sorry. Um, usually get it. I don't remember any one of us, but yeah. And by the way, look at, watch it. If you see the dude, the dude looks really fucked up. The dude looks fucked up. Like Alvin Kamara beat the shit out of that dude. Uh, so yeah, I, um, the three game suspension, I'm really surprised. I, I thought it was going to be six. I thought it was going to be six and maybe more. So yeah. Um, yeah. You're right. You you are right, Slasher. You're completely correct. Um, I saw footage afterwards, and because like here's a, you hear a fight, and I'm thinking, you know, this this isn't correct. This isn't correct. I know, but when I hear fight, I I picture NBA fighting where it's you know like this. Kamara fucked this dude up. Like Kamara fucked this dude up. I mean, this dude's eye was like swollen shut. He had to have surgery. <laughs> Keith says Wilson was in midseason four. Yeah, JMO got six or again. Okay. Um I get where you're coming from, but he deserves six. Okay, so you're gonna say, Dan, you get suspended six for gambling. You you put a guy in the hospital, you only get three and it's deserved. Yeah, and, and the reason why is that um you, you know, I, I don't have a good reason. I, I lied to you. I don't have a good reason. Did Jamo deserve six? Yeah. That, those are the rules. Every NFL player knows it. Um, I'm one of these people that thinks that what you do off the field is is on you. You do it You do it in the Lions building. You, you're, they teach classes on it. Um, he got taught classes before he even practiced at Alabama on rules and things like that. I know you're, you're taught at an early age not to fight, but um, – I'm going to be honest with you. I really thought Kamara was going to get at least six, and he fucked the dude up really bad. Now, apparently the dude uh, got several hundred thousand dollars in a settlement, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's on – yeah, I, I lawyer it, – it's, it's crazy. Um, from, what, from what I'm gathering um, – I, I don't I don't know if I should go down this road at all. From what I'm gathering, it is a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I'm on level with you, man. Would I would I get the shit kicked out of me for a couple hundred thousand? Yeah, I, I would. But I mean that dude, I dude, I mean, his eye was like swollen shut. I mean, the thing is though, when you, you kind of watch players on TV and, and you're like, a guy's a small guy, but Alvin Kamara is not a Big running back. The dude's still 215, 220. I mean, you know, I don't know the size of the other dude, but um I'm 5'8, 170. All right. So so like Kamara would have about you know four or five inches on me and 50 pounds. I mean, you know. Um so yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about that for my first bet. It, okay, so um I'm assuming it, I thought it was I thought it was one pride who sent me that. So anyway, uh, when you do a prop bet like this, I always recommend there's exceptions. All right, let me let me back up. Let me do this here. Let me let me back up. If you're gonna make a prop bet and you're gonna bet on an over, wait as long as you can before you make the bet. So you don't want to make the bet in preseason because you never know what's gonna happen. You could have an offensive lineman go down, he may tear his ACL. You'd never know. Now, keep in mind, all these things happen in the regular season, but don't ever do this. Um, 
before the season. Now, if you're going to bet the under, do it as early as you want. I, I got there's a guy, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to try to get him to come on my show one of these days. Uh, I eat great, great Twitter uh, account. There's a lot of sports betting, and um, anyway, he took some unders. I, he took under Mahomes passing yards. It's like over 4,800. It's a big number. Now, keep in mind he, he hit 5,200 last year, but I understand why he went under 48. I think he got like under 3,800 for Bryce Young. And I'm like, that's a, that's a crazy high number for a rookie quarterback. So that means, <laughs> I would say both the Eagles and the Chiefs running games in the Super Bowl were basically football. <laughs> it, it, it was a great game, man. It was a great game. Hmm. Charlie Heck was right. Okay, Texans. Okay. I was I was thinking Denver, but it was Texans. First time ever in Ford Field's history. That's I I, I want okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this. I want the hype to be there. I want the hype to go. But when I went on Luke G's show, I was like, oh my God. It, it I had no idea. So I want to issue a challenge. I want to do it on Luke's show. I haven't run this by Luke at all yet. But there is a challenge I'm going to issue out to all Lions fans. Unfortunately, I won't be wearing a uh, Jared Goff jersey. I'm not going to spend a hundred and some bucks on something I'm going to wear one time. It's funny. I got several jerseys. I don't. I don't do jerseys anymore. If I can find a Lions jersey like on eBay or something uh, relatively cheap, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. You know, I, I'm weird when it comes this this shirt. Okay, uh, um, it's uh, Teague sent this to me for free. I, 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 all except for shoes, I spend money on shoes. Um, rest of clothes I wear are dirt, dirt cheap. This, this t shirt's free. So, season tickets sold out, single games available as usual. That's it. If you're talking about Chiefs, Lions, yeah, you know, it's funny because I know Vikings fans travel, I know Packers fans travel. I have no idea about Lions fans. I'm wondering how much, uh, Honolulu Blue and uh, Silver is going to be out there opening day. Oh, my God. Denver Gators here. Bunch of football nerds. Where are all the ladies at? Um, you know what? We, no, no ladies here. No ladies here. No ladies here, unfortunately. But, man, Denver Gator, damn it is good to see you, brother. Love seeing you in the comments, man. Yeah, man, anytime you do a show with other people, you got to convertly hit the record button or screen. You know, seriously, me and Luke – when the camera's off is is awesome. I I can't tell you how much I love Luke G. And um, I, I I was I actually was going to send you the link to the live stream so you could see. But it like we were, we were talking I think for about forty five minutes to so an hour. Um, but uh, I was going to send it to you because I think you would be floored. I would love to get your opinion, but but. The Lions are – so Luke's expecting a Lions victory week one, and he's he's ready. Like, he's bringing – you know, okay, so the thing is about you, Keys, this is so awesome. If you argue football with anything about Keys, Keys will be ready. Well, Luke G is like, hey, Dan, I'm ready. I'm going to bring you everything, and this is why the Lions are going to beat the Chiefs. And I was not prepared. Like, I was just dumbfounded. Uh, one guy was like, get that stupid grin. Because I'm sitting here grinning. I'm doing this like, you know, because I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. I was expecting the hype, but you're expecting a week one win? Eee, and But no, they were ready. He, Luke, Luke G was ready with facts. Like, this is why they're going to win. This, bam, 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 bam. And, and, and it, I, I was going to send it to you. Uh, but Luke's, when Luke comes on, it, it's going to be um, – in a month from now, he's ready. And he, I said, I said, Luke, when you come on, can you please bring the bring this, bring this? And he's like, Oh yeah. And so I want to go back on his show um, and issue a challenge for all the Lions fans. It, it's going to be fun. But I, I, I was going to send that to you. If you have about an hour, uh, I'll, I'll send, I'll DM you the link, um, and you can check it out because I think you would be really surprised as well. Uh, my wife is at work, DG, and rumor has it Dan is at really worn out to birth us this week. <laughs> I can be mostly objective. You want BCS or, or something? No, I, I, um, 
Yeah, it, it, it was awesome, though. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like it was bad. No, it was awesome. But um, I, I, it, I really, really, really um, want to issue a challenge for Lions fans out there. I, I wanted to, Originally, I was thinking about just waiting till Luke comes on my show. I want to do it sooner, and I want to do it for all Lions fans. Uh, so, yeah, I got I, I a challenge for Lions fans. It, it, it should be pretty good. Keys are so large for March. <laughs> I know. Keys is on fire. Yeah, Jeff Okuda. Get, it, um, I, I think it. I think it's a sprain. I don't think it's anything major. I'm following up on that because I, I think Atlanta's expecting him to be the number two guy uh, across from AJ Terrell. And he doesn't have to be great, but um, I think they're expecting. Here's the deal. Um, like like uh, it, it's when it author 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 blanks the owner. Author Smith, I'm sorry. Okay, Author Smith, it, it's um, playoffs. Playoffs are fired, so um, it, it's a big deal. Big deal. Same Dan, I struggled to force myself uh, to watch something I record when I already. Yeah, I, I, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like mo movies and TV shows. If I know the ending, I mean, the the exceptions like something like a James Bond movie. I know what's going to happen. I already know the whole plot. Um, by the way, I'll, I'm ne I'm not going to watch if, if 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 James Bond's a woman. I'm not going to watch this shit. But uh, that's another topic, another day. But um, I, a James Bond movie, you know, like uh, uh, the the Marvel movies, like you know, I I you know, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen. Um, uh, the the Flash movie, which I just watched, which was actually really good. Like I I knew like you know Flash wasn't going to die, but you know like you know things things like that but yeah i i it's so hard for me to do it i am gonna watch it because i there are a few things i want to see about makai beckton because he, he's a guy i think could have some trade value um might be interesting to see um he was if i remember 11th or 12th pick overall uh coming out of louisville i didn't think he'd be a good left tackle but i think he's a guy who can be a really good right tackle so it'll, it'll be interesting so Name two people shot in the head in the theater, Abe Lincoln and the guy sitting. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, man. That story almost ruined my pre dog. I heard that. Uh, One Pride 40 says, Jamie doing well in camp. I did hear that. And that's that's got to be good news for Lions fans. Oh, by the way, um, so I brought that up that McNeil was 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 moving to the five tech, and um, uh, Anthony he has a roar, roar of the Lions UK. I've been trying to get him to come on here because it's like six hours ahead. You know, it's like one in the morning. He's like, Dan, I can't do a live stream, but uh, we we can do a move. We can do like a a video or something. I, said, I don't know why I said movie, but he told me that was bullshit. And, and I was like, okay, so I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just telling, I'm just telling you, you can watch it yourself. But I, I was like, no, nah, man, I, I got a DM. And he's moving to five tech. And he's like, nope. And now Anthony, I didn't correct him, but Anthony said that um, Juwan Short was a rotational tackle at Jacksonville. And it's like, no, no, he, he, he was a starter. He came in day one starter on the right side. Um, but I, I didn't correct him. You know, I'm like, because they're 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 making reasons why Detroit's going to beat the Chiefs, and I'm just like, okay, I'm 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 going to just wait. I'm going to wait on this one. So, stay out of Vegas. Stay off your DraftKings app. Stay out of nightclubs after midnight. Stay off the IG with your guns. Just leave, just leave your baby mama's instigator. Let your friend fight instead. And um, I think that this is uh, this is like you know things that should. It's actually funny. Uh, I I could swear I think Tony Dungy it was Warren Sapp. Warren, Warren Sapp was quoting what what Tony Dungy used to tell players. He's like, uh, you know, stay out clubs after midnight. Stay off you know social media. Um, there there was an NBA player. One of his buddies was like, like he was doing a live stream. One of his buddies pulled out a gun and you know trying you know to be cool and stuff and got him in a lot of trouble. I don't know who the NBA player is, but yeah. Make sure you hide your mom from Zach Wilson, everybody. I disagree, but how, you, know, you know what? You're right, One Pride. Um, you're right. 
So here's a deal. So here's a drill is that one pride 40 has a great point. I, I don't see how assault is justified, but gambling isn't. Um, Cause I originally said, I get the JMO suspension. I stand by that. Alvin Kamara putting a guy in the hospital three, three games. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing, times have changed because it used to be that um, before, the, before the NFL conduct policy, I remember, um, I, you know what, I don't want to say the player, I'm not going to say the player's name because there, there, was, there was one year there was a lot of Chiefs players that were in trouble. And it was like four or five Chiefs players in the 90s had like domestic battery charges in, in like one season. And it was just like, it was just kind of a blip, you know, like uh, so-and-so went to jail you know, uh, alleged assault with, with girlfriend. And um, it was no big deal. You can go back and look this up. Steve Smith spent the night in jail um, for, for a alleged criminal assault, uh, got released, played in a game and had the best game of his career. He said a single game record for like total yards in game it was like 400 yards in game. He had a kickoff return, a punt return, um, like a couple of 80 yard, it was crazy. And, and like he spent the night before in jail where today he, he would have been suspended. It, it, it's, it's, it's a different age. Um, but because there's video, because how bad it looked. Um, I've, I seriously thought, I, I think I, I, I'd have to, I'd have to dig through it and I'm not going to, but I could swear it was six, six. I thought it was going to be six to eight, maybe more. Three, I, I'm really surprised about it. Really surprised. And I think that what's going to happen is, um, I think the, I, I hate to say this, but I mean, I think the next time something like this happens and there will be a next time, like they may try to make an example and, and go to eight. Cause I, I think there's going to be some backlash because it was bad, man. I think part of it is, is that, um, we kind of became desensitized because it, it was almost two years ago. It was almost two years ago. So, but you you got a great point, One Pride. This is a great point. Uh, Derrick Henry, 10 plus touchdowns is plus 110 and it's free money and you can parlay. Okay. Um, I, I get why you like this bet. I don't like it. And, and I'll tell you why. The last time he had uh, over 400 touches was the 2,000 yard season. What happened? Uh, he he uh, only played seven or eight games and he, and he didn't hit that. Um, Derrick Henry's taken a ton of punishment over the years. Um, I would not recommend 10 plus. I would not recommend that bet. I say that and he'll probably end up like 20 or something, but um, no, no, he's, he's absorbed a lot of punishment. David Montgomery uh, at five and a half. I really, I really, really like because um, he's going from, cause he had 12. I know for a fact he had, tw- I'm pretty sure I'm, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'm pretty sure he had 12 one season with Chicago with a terrible offensive line. You're going from like almost the worst offensive line to like maybe the best in Detroit. And you're a big back. Um, it, it kind of makes sense. And, and you're getting five and a half. Um, another thing about Tennessee is that they're, they're doing some weird stuff on their offensive line. Um, their starting right tackle is going to be out the first six games due to injury. Uh, Andre Dillard, uh, I, I was kind of surprised when they drafted Skarnonsky and they said, we're going to put you at guard. No, I know we never, I know he never played at guard, but we got this guy who was a complete bust in Philly. He's going to play left tackle. You're going to play next to him at guard. And I'm like, Really? Um, I would I would hold off. You uh, you know, unrelated. Um, they uh, busting with the boys had uh, Mike Vrabel, and and it was like who would win between Mike Vrabel and and Dan Campbell? They interviewed Mike Vrabel. He's like, who would win in a fight between Mike Vrabel and, and Dan Campbell? He goes, and he goes, I think I Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel's a badass. He, Mike Vrabel goes, I think I beat up anybody unless it's like Jeffrey Simmons or somebody. <laughs> And by the way, I would I would pay, I, I seriously I would shell out. And I, I'm a cheap fucker, but I would shell out 200 bucks to watch a uh, 
Mike Vrabel versus Dan Campbell fist fight, or like MMA or some shit. A brand new energy and Lions fan base. Thanks to Sheila Ford and crew. You are right. We deserve a good team. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt you have been. I am behind on comments, so bear with me, though. I'm going to read them all. I'm going to read them all. I'm jacked up. I'm ready to go. A uh, side note here, um, I'm almost at 1,100 subscribers. I'm like five away. If you don't mind, you know, uh, on your social media, share the channel. Uh, you know, by the way, by the way, uh, anything you guys can let me know about like hidden details about your team, all my social media links are below. So please like the video and, and please share them. I'm, I'm just five away. I think I'm five away. Dan Priority's birth on blood. <laughs> I'm, I, I, okay, I take care of my shoes, but everything else, I am super cheap. Free t shirts, um, uh, champion shorts. Um, there's this place called Half Half that uh, discounted clothes place I got my boxers at. Yeah, yeah, I'm super cheap when it comes to clothes. Hatter's House 710. Yo, go Lions. Yes. I, uh, if, if you tuned in just now, I was on the Luke G show last week. I'm going to try to get on this week. And um, I am going to issue a challenge to all Detroit Lions fans, all Detroit Lions fans, but I'm going to do it on his show. I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to actually, I'm going to hit up Luke and, and uh, Anthony. Anthony has a YouTube channel. I don't have the link, but it's Roar of the Lions UK. Uh, re real knowledgeable. I'm going to try, I'm going to get, we're going to do something together here in the near future. I love that dude. Ford Field has been super busy. I love it. It has been. If Lions and Browns made the Super Bowl, we know the world was ending. You know, it, it would be, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. I, I remember it. it <laughs> I remember. I shouldn't say that word. I remember, but um, 1981, when the 49ers and the Bengals went to the Super Bowl, there there were you know a couple of um, 49ers were around for a while, but the Bengals were relatively new, and people were like the world's ending. 49ers and Bengals in the Super Bowl, so. But for real, if the Chiefs didn't make it in any particular season, I'd root for it. Uh, dude, it'd be a lot of fun, man. I mean, you know, as far as the NFC is concerned, I would love to see Lions in the Super Bowl. I, that would be link. Uh, uh, that would be awesome. A lot of Luke's viewers coke. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what Pride 40, I'm pretty sure meant to say a lot of Luke's viewers come on pretty aggressive. No, they were on Coke. No, no, they, they, they got, I, I, uh, seriously, they, um, God, I would, I seriously was when I, when I, I, so here's, here's the drill full, full disclosure. I, I expect the Lions to kind of the start the season slow. And I really thought the Lions were thinking, well, yeah, but after the buy, because their buy is week nine, we're, we're just going to be dominant. No. And I brought that up and I was just bitch smacked. Uh, like, I mean, they were like, how dare you think that we're going to start off slow? I was not prepared for, for the reaction when I suggested the Lions are going to start slow. I was not prepared. Because of that reaction, I want to issue a challenge to all Lions fans. I, I will I will send you that link. I, I, right after I get off here, I'll send it to you. Um, I think it's about two hours. So what Luke does, and I may do the same thing myself down the line. Luke suggested it because you get people to come on and um, it, it's more engaging. So what he does is he takes the StreamYard link and he, and he posts it at the top. So he'll go and he'll do his talking points. And I'll say anybody who wants to come on. And I, I was and I, I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to come on. I want to ask, you know, what do Lions fans think? Um, because my question was, is there any possibility week week nine, which is their bye week? Um, so the trade deadline's Halloween. Monday night football is week 
Okay, my camera's okay. There it is. So week eight, the Lions play on Monday Night Football, which is October 30th. They host the Raiders. And I said, is there a chance that at, at going into the bye that Aaron Glenn could be fired? And because you may come out to a slow start, the expectations are high. And you know what happens? And Anthony had some logic. He goes, Well, you know, if they're giving up 30, 40 points, there's a possibility, but I don't think so. And, and, and that was like, so anyway, I'm, I got, I got, I got some abuse, man. I, they did not like me in, in Luke's chat, but Luke stood up for me. Um, and I'm going to issue a challenge out to, to the Lions fans because of that. Um, but yeah, if, by the way, so I had the comments shut off on my end for like the first 20 minutes. And I turned on the comments and I was like, oh my God. Uh, they were not happy with me, so yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you, and and I think I think you'll see, I'll think you'll see like, you know, but yeah, they they were oh god, like I I expected that the the excitement level to be here, it's it it's up there, like like it, it I did not expect it, but I'm going to issue them a challenge, and and I did agree to come on Luke's show if uh, the Chiefs lose and 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 eat some crow. So uh, if, if the Lions beat the Chiefs, I am I am going to go on the Luke G show. And, and I'll put a link to that in my description, too. So. Dan loves them large and hard charts. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I, I am. Oh, God, I am behind. But, yeah. I don't know if anyone has been following any of the Eagles camp, but uh, going off with the writer, see Nolan Smith is going to be a star. Slasher, um, you, you, you mean you follow each other on Twitter. Can you send me some of that stuff? I have, I haven't heard anything about the Eagles in camp. Can you follow? I had a feeling because that's a guy that just should not have fallen be below 15. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nolan Smith went to the combine, dominated in the combine. Uh, the tape looked like he was going to be a top 20 player. Then he has, um, so, so anyway, so tape was like a top 15 player goes to the combine. Looks like he's going to be a top 10 player, but it, it's a top heavy draft. So somewhere between 10 Eagles get him at 30. I, I went through, it was funny because I went through my mock drafts. And I kept on having him free fall, but not, not the 30. Yeah, he, he's, he's, you guys got a great player, man. Please, please send me that stuff. The Lions fan base, yes, yes. Ford Field sold out season. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Defense looks good to you. No, McNeil's at, okay. Um, I thought you told me five tech. Okay, I'm wrong. Speaking of conduct policy, thoughts on the reports of the league adjustments so they can punish drafted players for things they did before entering the NFL. Um. I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, I do, I did think it was coming uh, because the way it works out right now is that if you do something in college, you can get off scot free. And it, as soon as you enter the pros, uh, the Kate, you know, what really started this. And I, I don't know if you'll remember this. It was Robert. N N N N I, I can't pronounce his name. Anyway, he had uh, going into his sophomore junior year, looked like it was going to be a top five pick, and he was an old Miss defensive tackle. I think Arizona ended up taking him in the second round. His last year in college had a bad year, but going into the bowl game um, at the hotel, he did something crazy. He shattered a window, like to the hallway. He shattered like the whole window. Um, it was a huge ordeal. Got kicked off the team. And that, and that caused a slide in the draft. And what they what they were doing is the NFL was wanted to punish him. I mean, there's like property, there's property damage. Um, I, I don't know if it was a result of the fight. It was a huge deal. And what happened was the NFL wanted to, to punish him. They wanted to say, no, you got to. And, and they're like, but there was nothing in there. Hey, look, he wasn't an NFL player. That's where that started. And and I it's it's in the it, it's. It's almost like McDonald and Sue. It's 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 Robert and Diche. So I'd have to look it up, but that's where it started. So this has been in the mix for several years, and um, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. To be honest, but I, I think it's going to happen sooner sooner than later because uh, 
Uh, they 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 want to avoid things like that. So, if you think, do you think Jonathan Taylor gets traded? If so, what teams do you think he would be in on? It. You know what, Key? So so I almost made a video and, and just I haven't had a chance. So um, uh, I was going to make a video because three teams stood out. Three teams stood out as a possible trade can really, really good trade candidates. Um, and I'll, and I'll tell you, uh, Los Angeles Rams, um, Sony Michelle. Okay, Sony Michelle retired. Now they end up signing, uh, drafted by Denver in the third round, former Oregon Duck. I, 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 it, I can't think of his name anyway. Uh, the Rams haven't had a first-round draft pick since 2016 when they chose Derek, Jared Goff. They love trading first-round picks. I don't think the Rams would want to trade for a running back, but Jonathan Taylor going to the Rams made a lot of sense to me. Uh, but I don't see the Rams doing that. They like late-round draft picks. Um, Daryl Henderson's player I really liked. I, I think they're going to roll with him. And then they just picked up somebody. I think they drafted a guy in the sixth round out of Ole Miss who I'm really dying to see in preseason because I, I want to say his name's Chris Evans, and I'm, I'm, I think that's his name. But he should have gone like in the third and fourth round. He's, he's an NFL running back. He really is. I know he's drafted in the sixth round. He's, he's going to play sometime this year. I think he would. So I think the Rams was one. This is going to suck. Uh Jonathan Taylor traded for Austin Eckler and a pick. So uh, the, the Colts would get Austin Eckler, which I think would work out good for them. And then the, the Chargers the Chargers would get Jonathan Taylor. Now, they would have to give up a draft pick, but they wouldn't give up a number one. And, and I was thinking that makes sense because Jonathan Taylor is a bigger back. Um, you, you could have some fun with that. But the team that makes the most sense to me would be Arizona. Um, Kyler Murray is trying to come back week one. He, if he comes back week one, he's not going to be 100%. This gives the Cardinals a big-time uh, big time threat on offense, which they don't have. Remember, they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. So uh, Jonathan Taylor – and keep in mind, here's why the Cardinals make sense. They get the Texans first and third, and then they also get an extra draft pick from, from the Eagles. So they already got 10 draft picks. So Arizona makes the most sense. Do I think he gets traded? No. I, I think that the Colts are going to play hardball with him and say, you can sit out if you want. We're not trading you. But the number one team would be Arizona. But I think both the LA teams kind of make sense. If, if I'm if, if I'm the Chargers, I, I might just make the flip, go Austin Eckler for Taylor and then what I would do is I would go to some of those superstars, um, specifically Justin Herbert, and say, listen, can you work something out? Well, maybe not Herbert because this contract was just signed, but um, that that's kind of what I was thinking. And I think Matthew Stafford, who said that he wouldn't renegotiate his contract, I think if the Rams went to him and say, hey, listen, we can get you Jonathan Taylor, I think I think Stafford would go, you know what, I can, I can move some of this money around. So. The anime policy is a joke. Um, I, I agree with that to some extent, but I mean, it's something players know about. So I can imagine a scenario where an NFL star beats up a dude and during the fight, another NFL star puts money on the fight and that dude gets suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Derrick Henry finally hitting a running back wall is like expecting Tom Brady to fall off the cliff the way many of us have wrongly predicted both for years. It's a different thing with running backs. Um, I remember Eddie George after he had his big season, but I mean, you know, he came back I, in my video regarding the Titans. Um, Derrick Henry, I think had his best season last year and, then, and he didn't run for anywhere near 2000, but he had his best season last year. I mean, he was going against like 15 man fronts because they had nothing at quarterback. I mean, you know, you, you basically just played press man. You put nine in the box essentially. So Dan Campbell would destroy him. I don't know, dude. Vrabel, dude, Vrabel's a bad dude, man. That's a big fucker. 
One ride, though, I will say this. I think me and you would both pony up 199 on pay-per-view for that. I I know I would. And I I, I you know what? I should have sent you that clip. It, it was it was great. Busting with the boys is another great show. This wouldn't be pot. No, it would not. Hey, that kid Justin Ross is is looking pretty good. I think I think he's got a chance to get starting. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, those of you who don't know, Justin Ross is a, a undrafted rookie, or I'm sorry, an undrafted free agent his second year with the Chiefs. Uh, he had some injury issues at Clemson, and he had some injury issues last year. There's a ton of uh, training camp talk. Um, he looks like he's going to make the team. I don't think he's going to start. But uh, there's more and more talk about it, though. I mean, the talent's high. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, I think I think what's going to happen with Kansas City is that they're, they're, they're really liking the two tight end sets. They love Sky more. And then they got uh, MVS. Now, MVS had like a, a bad shoulder injury. I don't think it's – I say bad, but um, – if he goes down, it's a different situation. But they love MVS as one starter, Sky Moore. And uh, but but you'll see more of Justin Ross as far as being a starter. Probably not, but um, don't tell Chiefs fans that they they love the Justin Ross potential. Like, like there's a lot. I saw something like, oh, Justin Ross, he's better than T. Higgins. He started over him in college. It's like, eh, slow down. That's that's yeah, he was there for a couple years longer. You know, T. Higgins just graduated from high school and showed up. I mean, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, the, just the hype train is is pretty pretty full. Yeah. Uh, they had a ton of concerts and Summer Slams coming to town. Gator would probably be interested. Um, I don't think they will start slow this slow. Um, there, there's a different. I I I do think that they're going to start slow, but we'll, we'll find out. I expect the offense start fast and improve, but I also expect that that's that was kind of my point. Is that I expect I'm like, look, you're getting a middle linebacker who's a rookie. You got three new pieces on defense, three new starters, and you may have a new defensive lineman. They're like, no, 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 it, it, no, de- no, new defensive lineman. They got they got that Broderick Martin rookie in the third round. Um, so I was like, look, you got at least four new starters. So, you know, but yeah, yeah. I, I think the defense will take a little time. Not all Lions fans are that aggressive. I was really floored at the negative. Res- I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I was not expecting uh, the response I got on the G show. I was not expecting that, but I'm going to issue a challenge. I'm going to run it by Luke first. Uh, yeah, I'll send it to you. Funk! Been a long few days. How everybody doing tonight? Funk, I am doing fantastic. Uh, Funk was also uh, in the chat when I was on Luke G's show. He was also defending me. L- L- uh, Funk was the only one in the chat who wasn't trying to linchpin me. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was crazy, man, but Funk was there, man. Funk, man, how the hell are you doing, man? I am doing great. I hope you are doing great. Funk, do you expect a slow start from the Lions this year? I expect both sides of the ball not to start. Okay, I'm sorry. I expect both sides of ball to not start slow. Can't afford to start slow. Broderick Martin looks scary too. I I think that seriously, I could see a scenario where you have McNeil as a defensive tackle, Martin as a nose tackle, and or actually you could probably flip that uh, because that that's that's what they did with the Rams is uh, they used um, Aaron Donald like in different places. And I was kind of thinking when you told me that. Uh, Martin, or, I'm sorry, McNeil lost weight that they're going to kind of use him like Aaron Donald. I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald, but you, you get where I'm going, hopefully. If they have a winning record by the deadline, expect Brad Holmes to make a trade. I think I think they will. I think they make a trade. I, I think they make a trade no matter what. I, I think this would be a year that I could see the Lions at the deadline saying, let's add somebody. With McNeil this year, think of an old school three four. Pascal plays the DN, Bugs plays the nose tackle, McNeil played the D. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That that's kind of what I was thinking. And so you, you have like um, except for Bugs, I was thinking you would have um I literally just Broderick Martin, the third round pick out of Western Kentucky, because he's that he's that big body 
but he has enough athleticism to cause some problems. That that's kind of the way I was thinking. And then you could also get creative and add some pieces. But yeah, yeah, you get it. Pride, no, I don't. I'm gonna do a video on why the Chiefs shouldn't pay Chris Jones. It, I I'm just it will get a lot of hate. I keys, I'm with you. And and you know, I I was really I didn't I didn't put it on social media and I I just I knew I didn't want to deal with it, but I was thinking trading him might be a good move. And and bottom line, I'm gonna make I'll I'll, I'll say here's the video. I'm I'll give you three good reasons right right here. Creed Humphrey, Nick Bolton, Trey, Trey Smith. And by the way, I don't think the Chiefs will keep Trey Smith. I think he'll be gone. But you have to find a way to pay Creed Humphrey. I'm sorry, I'm going blurry on you here. You can get the get the camera. All right. So, okay, there it is. Uh Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton are gonna want big time money. And they deserve it. And and if you pay Chris Jones, you can't pay, probably can't pay either one of those guys. So that, that's kind of your video. <laughs> yeah, you probably got other reasons, but no, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, and it'll suck. It will really suck. Um, especially since the Chiefs defensive lineman just got suspended six games. Uh Charles Umanihu, something like that. They were exp- that that was a name that I was I was kind of like. Nobody's really t- – he's going to miss the first six games this season. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Martin's definitely going to get snaps. It's taking a Frank – it's tanking Frank and a guard to stop him in, in practice. Yeah, I, I think he's going to play a lot. I really, I really do. Yep, and if carries to the regular season, good luck running on us. Keys it will, but I'm sure you'll get a few that are on your side. I am. I'm curious if the thoughts out there that the Lions have a better offensive line or skill players than the Eagles, better defensive line or secondary than the Eagles, better coaching or new offensive tackles and receivers in Kansas City, a huge loss. Um, you, you know, I didn't get a chance to argue that, uh, but uh, I you, you have to watch it for yourself and, and see, like, like I said, I was expecting the Lions to be at this level, and it 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 was it was I was not prepared. I was like, oh my god! I mean, the whole time I'm on Luke's show, um, I had a couple comments, wipe that smug smile off your face, it, but it was really it was like just shock. I mean, I I was not prepared. I was not I I. I, I was I was really floored. I I I I think I think I think you know me well enough that when you see my reaction and how I behaved um, on camera, you you can tell I was kind of just stunned. But yeah, I love Chris Jones. Love I I love Chris Jones and love interior pressure. But looking at it logically, not so simple. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that think that Chris Jones is is one of the ten best players in the NFL. I mean, I I think he was second or third in defensive MVP. Um, I think Chris Jones, if he stays in Kansas City, um, he's going to have a gold jacket someday. He might have a gold jacket someday anyway. But, I mean, if you give him the amount of money he gave Quinn and Williams, um, was it Dexter Lawrence got 94, Quinn and Williams got 96, uh, four-year 96, so it's $24 million a year. If you give them that, you can't pay You can't pay Creed Humphrey and you can't pay Nick Bolton. And I think that for the amount of money that you can pay Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton is pretty much the same that Chris Jones is asking. And what does Bill Parcells do with superstars that hit, that hit 31, 32? He, he, got, he got, did I say Bill Parcells? I'm sorry, Bill Belichick. And I remember the Richard Seymour trade. I remember he traded Richard Seymour two number ones. And I remember that first game, he had two sacks. I think he had four and a half the whole year. And now he's playing poker. But, I mean, he didn't, you know, I don't think anybody's given up two number ones for Chris Jones. But um, I, I, I really think that that might be the way it happens. And I, I'd rather keep Creed Humphrey and and uh, Nick Bolton, who, who are just – I mean, both of them, I think, are under 25. So, Keys, for the most part, it's considered that Philly is pretty much better all around than the Lions around here, but I think a few things are pretty close. Uh, that are, that actually wasn't the Justin Ross argument, Dan. It's that Ross's freshman year was on that team together. He was better than Higgins. 
also had that insane game against Bama, who was loaded with corners. Uh, that was the argument I seen anyway. It's like Sertan and Diggs on that D that he was beating as a freshman before the injury. Um, yeah, I mean the, the hype the hype behind Ross is pretty crazy. Uh, but I'm I'm still not convinced he's gonna be a starter, but yeah. No, you no, I don't I don't think you were there. No, you didn't. Funk was defending me, Luke G was defending me, Anthony was kind of like on the fence. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it was it was um the 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 I like the first 20 minutes I didn't even have the comments on. I looked at the comments, I'm like, oh my god. Uh it was it was nuts. 46 receptions for a thousand yards, 21.1 yards per catch is pretty insane. Keys. I expect that trade to be on defense. De yeah, I, I could see it too. Um I I mean I'm looking at something like Roquan Smith. Uh, you could get a player like that. I told Luke I thought it'd be Patrick Queen because uh, I could see Baltimore trying to move Patrick Queen. Uh, Baltimore loves getting draft picks, and Luke's like, nah, we like like bigger corners. But I started thinking about, like, well, you got one bigger corner. Don't you want one faster, smaller? But um, you could also go corner as, as well if, if your two corners don't pan out. Mosley has an extensive injury history. Uh, he's only played – uh, 12 games a season max. So a uh, corner would be a position. Um, maybe make a big trade for Chris Jones. You know, I'm just saying Amara would look really good in Chiefs red. How did Creed not? He didn't. Okay. So I, I don't pay for it, but oh my, all your, your, I, I, Oh, real? Oh, my God. He didn't make the top 100? I I, I don't know how to respond to that. I actually I, – I would have bet money top 60. Oh, my God. Really? I, I didn't I, – oh, my God. He's had a ton in cheek, but, man, you see some of the current players' position on top 10 of all time list. It isn't really a lie. Um, Current players position on top 10 of all time list. Uh, I'm sorry, Keys. I, I'm, I'm behind on comments. I'm not following that. Uh, Dan, I think Martin will end up taking over his starter, but Bugs has played well enough last year, earned starting right right at the beginning of the year. Um, I, I, I just, I really like the pick. I really like the pick. I didn't know too much about him, but he reminds me a lot of uh, Don Terry Poe. Uh, uh, a John Dorsey selection here in Kansas City, and and I think that it was a good move because I think what you really needed was to eat up some space in the middle, and he has enough athleticism that you know he's going to be a matchup nightmare. So I really like the pick; it was it was a great pick. Uh, one of the things I said in that video is that I really think your 2023 draft could be a draft we're talking about like 40, 50 years from now. Is like give me a draft, especially if Hendon Hooker ends up being a starter sometime. It could be a great draft. 100% do not. I would put him in the 60, 70 range. Yeah, I I kind of thought that uh, he, he's, so, he's so good. I, I, uh, I, if, if you don't realize how, how good Creed – I mean, Creed Humphrey is just amazing. And that's kind of the big reason why Chris Jones probably isn't going to get that new new contract is because the Chiefs have to figure a way to pay Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton. They got to pay, but both of those guys are wanting big time money. Matter of fact, Trey Trey Smith's another guy who definitely needs a raise. He's a six round draft pick, and he's been to a couple of Pro Bowls, so he needs a lot of money. I think the Chiefs will lose him, which will suck because he, he's just phenomenal, phenomenal. I can see us trading for Buckner during the during the debt. Ooh, ooh. I I I don't think he would. I I don't see. I I don't see. Uh, I don't see the Colts wanting to trade Buckner. They gave up a number one for him, and I I don't think you would do that. Uh, cornerback. I can see. Ooh, that would be another good one. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with Quinton Williams money. I do have a problem there in Donald money. I have a problem with Quinton Williams money because um, I, I just don't see the way that if they you sign him for Quinton Williams money with 
what you're giving Kelsey and what you're, what you're giving Mahomes, you, you can sign either Bolton or or uh, Humphrey. You can't sign them both. Um, that I, I that's I and and you can't really space it out because you really want to get. I think what the Chiefs want to do in a perfect world is is to get them like on a two or three year deal with less money. And, and I think he wants more. Oh, well, he's been out of it. He wants more money. Um, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't know how, I, how that can work. I, I just don't see how it can work out. Uh, to tell you the truth, I would love it if you, if you would take Quentin Williams money, but I don't think he wants to, I think he wants more. And I'll be honest, let's just say, let's just say they, they agree. I mean, can you pay, can you pay Chris Jones, Quentin Williams money and still sign Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton? That's the magic. Because for Quentin Williams money, I think that $24 million a year, you could sign both Nick Bolton and Creed Humphrey. And, and I'd rather do that than, than, pay, than pay Chris Jones, who I think will be in Canton someday. Yeah, the Lions fans are feeling themselves a little too much right now. I get the hype, but it's getting bad. I'm hearing 14 and 3 and stuff. That's a little bit much for me. Yeah, I I uh, got a lot of that. Um, I was I was hearing twelve and five and and definitely undefeated in the division. I was like, really? And and so yeah. Patrick Queen makes a lot of sense because I, they gave Raquan Smith all that money. They drafted Trenton Simpson in the first. You remember Trenton Simpson, didn't you? Was it you or, or you? Was it you or uh, was it? Um, uh, James that, that loved Trenton Simpson. I thought it was you, but yeah, they picked up Trenton Simpson in the third round. So Patrick Queen, I think Patrick Queen would be great. Luke Chief's like, no, we want bigger guys, but you already have a bigger guy. So don't you want somebody, don't you want that three down guy with a lot of speed? Like I, I thought Patrick Queen, like that's kind of like the name I'm thinking would be perfect. Um, and especially if Campbell struggles early in, which I, I don't, but I, I don't think he's going to be spectacular. But a guy like Patrick Queen could come in and, and really add something. So I personally think we are the only double digit win team from the north this year, but 10 11 is my comfort. See, that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm I'm seeing like maybe 10 to 11. And and I was thinking Lions fans were, were thinking 10 to 11 in the division, you know, something like that. And 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 um that's that's when I went into Luke G's show, I was thinking, okay, you guys are expecting 10 wins. Reason I asked Lions of uh, Lions versus Eagles, I'm trying to understand the weeks why Detroit's going to win Week One so strong. I'm gonna send you that clip, and and maybe you can because Luke gave a few of his arguments, and I would love this love to hear some keys come back to those. Eagles Eagles definitely have a better offensive line. No bias, just off the strength of Kelsey and Lane alone. Dickerson's a very underrated guard. I can't think of the, your left tackle's name. The massive left tackle, he's really good. Too, but that Matilia, uh, what that's I was thinking that was if you last year. Um, you know, you know, now you got me wondering Eagles versus Lions offensive line. Oh, god, that is good. I'll be honest with you, I'm I think going into 2023, and don't get mad, I, I might go, ignore last year. Going into 2023, by a pubic hair, probably take Penesol. Maybe I, 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 that would be tough. I would take Kelsey over Glasgow. Um, guard play, if he, I would probably take the left tackle. I don't know. That's a that's a tough one. I, I by the way, one pride says you know damn well, son. God, yeah, I know, I know, I I I know. God, I was so wrong about that guy. How many times did I say, well, the ceiling's a number two, and anyway, <laughs> yeah. In my mind, they think uh, Kansas City has fallen back. Detroit is better than Philly, or Kansas City has fallen back, and Detroit is close, or they believe the excuses are a mix of it. Um. 
I'm, I'm going to send you the link and, and take, take, take some, you can fast forward. It's like about an hour until I come on and, and you can kind of, you, you know me well enough. You can judge from some of my expressions. You can see how shocked I am and, and you can see. Yeah. Kelsey. Oh my God. I, I have no problem with Kelsey being 37, but Kelsey's 37 and Creed's not on it. Sewell, CJ, CGJ, no Ragnar. No, okay, so I, okay, so, um, I could have sworn I saw the, the list where golf and CGJ were, were next, were like 66 and 67. Sewell's not on it? I understand Ragnar not being on it. No disrespect. I understand. Sewell's not on it? Wow. Yeah. Roderick reminds me of Snacks. Yeah, great, great, perfect. That's exactly, yeah, excellent. Snacks Harrison. Big defensive tackle, movement skills. Um, because John Dorsey drafted Don Terry Poe. Go back and watch. Don't watch Don Terry Poe after, um, after, I want to say 20. He got injured in 2015 preseason. So just watch the first couple of years, so. Keys, because Lions fans are sipping the Kool-Aid. I think it would be a shootout, but it's in Kansas City, so I'm not putting money on my squad either way. I worry about the Lions response. So here's the deal with, with Detroit. Detroit week two has Seattle and Atlanta coming to town. And then week four, and I did not even get a chance to talk about this. I mean, I was under attack. But I'm going to bring this up. Is Week four is a big-time revenge game for the Lions. And, and maybe I worded that wrong. But – Lions go into Lambeau Field, and and I don't think Detroit understands that fans, coaches, and players of the Packers got Week Four circled. I I think that's going to be a, it's a Thursday night game. That that out of, of all the Thursday night games, I'm looking at that one. I'm like I'm not even you know I'm, I mean don't get me wrong, I got some love here from from Detroit, so that's awesome. But I'm looking at that as a fan, and I'm like that's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be that's going to be a real good one. I usually DVR the games on Thursday. That's that's one I might just like. You know, I don't want to watch this live. I probably won't just because the I had so many problems with with Amazon Prime uh, trying to trying to pause and skip. So I just gave up and started watching it on the NFL Network uh, the next day. We'll we'll wait and see what happens. That's that's going to be a damn good game. Lions Packers Week Four in Lambeau. Thursday night football. Yeah, Kelsey was 37. Green should have been in the 60s. That that would have been fair, but um, I would have put him below 60. I thought Creed Humphrey was just just amazing last year, and I'm a little biased, but um, God, I I don't. Yeah, I don't get it either. I I don't I don't get it. I I yeah. If if uh, Kelsey wasn't it was wasn't still in the league and Creed is definitely twice first team All Pro for his rookie and second season they just don't respect. I guess that might be it. I guess that might be it. And uh, Glenn is familiar with Lattimore. I forgot about that. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I think you can space it out, especially if you extend Jones. You can roll the cap savings from 23 over to 24 and then count on yearly cap increases. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But what do you do about the Bolton and, and Humphrey contracts? Because, you know, they're going to be I, – I don't know. I don't know if you can do that. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing, Keys. I, I wish I knew, but I don't because I'm not even including uh, Legereus Need. What's he going to ask for? Um, do you just, you just want to let him go? I, I would, I mean, I want to keep all the players that are really good, but a guy like Legereus Sneed, I mean, this is a guy who could easily get over 10 million easy when he hits free agency. So, oh God, Demario Davis, that would be such a good trade. That's a win-win for both teams because they're trying to get younger. And I mean, you have to realize Demario Davis is going to be 35 in January. And this is one of my all time favorite players, but would you use like a like a second? I probably not second. Let's say a third. 
All right, a third round draft pick on a guy like Mario Davis, probably a little high because he's only probably realistically got two, three years left. But but here's the thing: the Saints have been drafting linebackers. They got they got Pete Warner, they get, they, Pete Warner, and another guy they've used a uh, pretty high draft pick one not too long ago. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's a win for both teams. Demario Davis, I love Demario Davis so much. One of my all-time favorite players. But he's thirty. He's going to be thirty-five in January. So, oh my god! Hey, girl, TV. She goes, "Hey, my man, Dan. Oh man, I love Hey, girl, Cheryl, Cheryl. And if you look in the picture here, Cheryl's got her daughter Coco. She is adorable." Um, I'm wondering if Coco can do a shout out for me sometime. Love for Funk here. Another underrated signing for the Bears. They just picked up Yannick Naganwe. Uh, he's coming off a nine and a half sack season. He's on. So here's the deal with Naganwe and the reason why he keeps bouncing from team to team to team. He's an excellent, excellent, excellent pass rusher. Zero, um, zero interest in stopping the run. And uh, I'm hearing that he's he's kind of difficult to, to coach. But uh, the Bears have no pass rush at all, so I think it's a genius signing. I think the Bears are doing some real low key stuff. It's only a one year it's only a one year deal, but considering they have nobody to get after the passer, that it's a really good move. Uh, one pride's got twelve. That's that was consensus um, on Luke's Luke's show was twelve. I'll see in a lot of twelve. And a lot of undefeated in the division, and and I was like, I was like, I, I think it's a little high, but I I want this, like I want you to keep doing it. But like I said, I just when I went on Luke's show, I just was not ready. I I was not ready. God, hey girl gets so much love, and she deserves it. I still, as of now, am a belief that Flores could nearly equate for some of the lucky wins the Vikings had, and and. That could be a double-digit win team. And that's kind of what I'll sing and see. I I think that if the Lions would have signed, and I when I did the video, I should have put Flores in there well, but I put Vic Vangio. If they would have signed Vic Vangio, um, that's a double-digit win team. Boom, guaranteed. But because they're keeping Aaron Glenn and they didn't replace him, that's why I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I and, and that's the thing. Like people, Vikings are a 13 win team that a bad defense. So they get a new defensive coordinator. And and here's the deal. I, I know that they lost Thielen and, and I know they lost um I want to say Cook. Yeah. Dalvin Cook, yeah, I got right. Jordan Addison could be an upgrade at receiver. I'm not talking all time, but but Thielen, Thielen slowed down quite a bit. A guy like Jordan Addison, I, I mean, if, if he gets up to speed fast enough, he can be a solid number two, and that's all they're asking him to be. How are they going to fill the hold of Dalvin Cook? That I don't know. So it makes sense that the Vikings offense may slip a little bit, but that defense just with Flores alone, oh, man, and, and that's that's why I was like, you got a bunch of new pieces in the secondary, uh, but how can you get these guys together? And this is the mean part. All right, you get um, – Mosley comes from San Francisco. You get Sutton from Pittsburgh, CJ, GJ from Philly. You know what those three uh, teams have in common? Good defensive coaches, good defensive schemes. You can't say Detroit has that because the last – Two years under Aaron Glenn, they've had a bottom five defense. So when you take a guy from a good defensive scheme and you put him on a bad defensive scheme, you can't expect him to have the same result. Now you're hoping it does, but but you can't expect that. And that and that's kind of why I'm like, you know, if, if you guys start off slow, could you could you guys be looking to move on from Aaron Glenn? And and they were not hearing that. But um, but yeah, the floor. I kind of went on rant there. Sorry about that. But yeah, I I agree with that. Slasher, you may have a better line, but we got age on our side, bud. Yeah, that's why. That's why I would take um. That's why I would take Soul over over uh, Johnson. Is is the age? 
Kelsey over Ragnow, but not by much. No, not by much. So are you impressed with Brad? You know, it's funny. It's funny because I, I see a lot of John Dorsey and John Dorsey was the general manager with the chiefs. And there's not 10 more people more responsible for that San Francisco Super Bowl than John Dorsey. It looks, there's a lot of John Dorsey uh, there. And I, and I really think even though some line and I've deleted the comment because the guy with the guy came across wrong um, and he came across insulting, but he was right. Cause I kept on calling Dorsey the assistant general manager, but he has another title. There's a lot of what John John Dorsey's been in the league for a long time. And a lot of what the Lions are doing reminds me of what Dorsey did in Kansas City. So, like, even though Brad Holmes is a general manager, I keep looking at the Lions and seeing a lot of John Dorsey. So Ragnow is nice, but I don't see him on Kelsey and Creed's level. He yeah, I agree with that, but I mean I'm kind of a homer, so yeah. <laughs> Is Kelsey the only center on the list? Um, he's got to be, man. Nope. Golf, Amon Ra, and Hutch made it. Poe is much, much more of a pass rusher. No. No. That's the thing. Here's how, here's how special Poe was. Poe was 346, and he played a zero tech, and you could not move him. Now, this is his first, first two years. He had back fusion surgery, lost all that power. And then what you do is um, – on third down, what they did is they put him out of five tech, right? And then he rushed the passer. And what teams did was like, well, we don't want this 346-pound dude hitting our quarterbacks. We're going to double-team him, and we have to single coverage cover either either um, Justin Houston or Tamba Ali. And, well, what happened is uh, Justin Houston got 22 sacks. And, he, and this was one of the big reasons why um, – this was one of the things that was really, really wrong with John Dorsey is that year that Justin Houston got 22 sacks. He, he held out and Dorsey said, no, you got to prove it. You're you're going to prove it here. And he's like, well, look, I was a third round pick, made a couple pro bowls. Uh, the NFL named me top 50 by, by the players. Like I, I earned it. And he's like, no, you got to prove it. And he's like, okay, I'll prove it. I had 22 sacks. So instead of asking for 56, he chiefs ended up giving him a hundred million and and at, Dorsey was that was kind of, Dorsey also did some other things. He cut Jeremy Macklin. Um, he cut Jeremy Macklin, who canceled his honeymoon to, to come into training camp. He cut him via voicemail. And Andy Reid was pissed. Andy Reid was really pissed about that. Cut him via voicemail. Couldn't even talk to the dude. And that, and, and cause you remember he came with him, you know, from Philly. I mean, you know, so, uh, but yeah, no, no, Poe, Poe stuff to run. He, he was the perfect zero tech and, and yeah. Then you need to look closer. Impressed with Brad Holmes or I'm sorry. Now I need to look closer. Um, so, okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay, Kelsey over Ragnow, but not by much. Um, all I'm going to say is there's a reason that Kelsey was five-team, first-team all-pro dude. He's the toughest guy on the line, hasn't missed a game for eight straight seasons. He's very impressive. He is. There's, there's a big reason why they signed him to another one year. They, I, I think he was on extension last year. or so. I think they – I think they I may be wrong about this. I know they signed him on a one-year deal this year, but I think they did last year as well. They're giving him like a one-year $10 million deal. And and they already got his replacement, uh, Cam Jurgens. They're, they're going to have Jurgens play at guard until Kelsey wants to retire. So – So Creed is really close to Kelsey, in my opinion, really close. And I think what Keyes is trying to say is that is that Humphrey's better. I, I'm, I might be putting words in your mouth, but Slasher, no one's arguing about Kelsey being a stub that Frank is the third best center in the league. That might be true. That might be true, man. That might be true. I'll be honest, I I I uh I'd have to go down. I can I can make an argue argument that that um 
if you just took took the jerseys off, took the helmets off, and said who's the better player, um, you might be surprised that Humphrey's better than Kelsey. You might be surprised. Humphrey's really good, man. I mean, I'm not saying Kelsey isn't. I'm I'm just saying Humphrey's just special. So yeah. And that isn't disrespect for Jason. He's playing at a high level and such a great guy. I love. Oh yeah, New Heights is phenomenal. Just as much for him. New Heights is phenomenal. Oh my God. Oh snap. The talent is here. Gooch is in the house. Oh man. Gooch. Gooch. Um, I'm gonna send you and Keith a little bit of Lions fans telling you why the Chiefs are going to lose week one. So it's so good to see you, man. I I I don't want to get, I don't want to get into too much of your details, but I know you've been busy. So man, I am so happy to see you, man. And I want I'm I'm gonna I'd like to have you and Keys uh come on a live stream with me here in the near future. I'm gonna DM you guys you guys some stuff. You can get Davis for a fourth in my opinion. You might. I, I threw out third because I know the Rams gave a second and a third up for Von Miller, which I thought was a little much, but you did win a Super Bowl. Um, you might be able to get Mario Davis for a fourth. I know they drafted Pete Warner a couple of years ago. They got him. Like, like he, they got him. They also got somebody else. I'm just drawing a blank. They got some good linebackers. It's just that he's – DeMario Davis is so good, man. Ah, uh, that's fair to say. I also think Corey Lindsay from the Chargers. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I want to say Lindenbaum from the Ravens can make a good argument. Um, trying to think here. I don't think Ty. I call him Tyler Badass uh, for for the for the um, for the Cowboys. I don't think he's on the level though, but he's he's pretty good. Um, Trying to think of like best centers in the league. Corey Lindsay from the Chargers is a good one, though. I want to I want to say Ryan Lindenbaum. I come on, Keys. I know you know he went to Iowa. Really good, really good center. Raven center, second or third year in the league. Uh, really good too. But um, Ryan, no number three, maybe. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying no. I'm. I'm just saying maybe. Um, that's that's a tough one. Hey, girl, is a looker. She is. We love you too. Of course she can. And uh, yeah, Coco is adorable. I, I love hearing her talk on videos. Yannick is terrible. <laughs> so here's, here's, here's what, here's what I've heard is that he, he keeps getting one year deals because all he wants to do is sack the quarterback, regardless of whatever play you call, he just goes after the quarterback and he has zero interest in stopping a run. That's what I've heard. But the thing is, the Bears the Bears signed three defensive tackles in the draft. Now, one of them, I know, was a seventh-round pick. Um, they, they got the kid from Florida, massive run stuffer, but they got zero pass rush. And, and that was the thing I hated. But um, Yannick can get out. Yannick's an excellent pass rusher. He does not care about stopping the run. And I don't expect him to in Chicago. He's on a one-year deal, so he wants to get those sacks. That way he can get he can get another one year ten million dollar deal and I don't blame him I don't blame him at all. The word bad. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. He's terrible. Gets he's terrible. Gets run. Creed and Kelsey, Kelsey are. I think so, man. I really do. Humphrey is special, man. I mean, he really is. Here's the deal with 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 uh, Creed Humphrey. If if you're not aware. He's built like a left tackle, like like he's like six five, six six, three oh five. He can run. He, he just he's just a good old country farm boy, and it, he seriously he looks like what a left tackle should look like. Um, so what what it is? He's a lefty. So what he does is a little unusual. He takes the football, he puts it point down because he's six five, and 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 um. So he gets to Chiefs training camp and you know he's snapping the ball and, and Mahomes isn't used to the left rotation, so it took some while and and he's like, well, you know, I can I can switch I can switch hands and I I, I hope I'm right about this. <laughs> so the story is 
Andy Reid says, you know, are you left or Andy right? And he goes, I'm lefty. He goes, well, just do it left. And, you know, Mahomes will get used to it. <laughs> and, and Mahomes had no problem saying, yeah, I'll just get used to it. But there hasn't been too many center quarterback fumbles. There was one against the Bengals, but I'm, you know, I mean, that was in the playoffs. I mean, but yeah, yeah, it was a little bit of an issue. But yeah, he holds the ball point down. And a lot of teams are changing. It used to be where you, where you hold the ball, um, you know, side, kind of side, you know, you hold the ball and you snap it back. Well, he puts it like as the tip, he puts the tip down and, and it helps him get into a stance quicker because he, because he's, he's tall for a center. Centers are not supposed to be six, five, six, six, but, but Creed Humphrey is, but he can move. He can move. Um, it, it, you, you, you can use him in screens. He's powerful. I mean, phenomenal in pass coverage. Um, just, just, just a great center. Kelsey can do all these things too. So, my experience of Luke is logical, even keels, etc. So I can understand why that may have been a shock. It, 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 yeah, and so Luke G spent a lot of time defending me, but um, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. And in, in, uh, I don't know how much, Luke Luke didn't show a lot of the comments that um, you know get this clown off of here, Luke. This Joker doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, get this uh, one one guy put in. Get this Jersey Shore mf or off the show. <laughs> It, it, I, Luke didn't show a lot of those. He, he, he just like, you know, did like one of those things, you know, so you, 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 you know, you may not see all the comments that I see. Hey girl, I love you. And your show is phenomenal too. And, and Coco is adorable. Anytime Coco's on, it's just like an extra bonus. Coco's so awesome. I don't know how I feel about the report saying Darnell Washington was brick wall and TJ Watt. I, 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 find that hard to believe i find it hard to believe vikings lost like eight starters hendricks is, hendricks is going to be missed um i don't know if they lost eight but they did lose quite a bit but i i do have a lot of faith in, in brian flores it may take some time but i do have faith in flores getting some things turned around and they do have danielle hunter and and he's really good he's got to stay healthy if he stays healthy he, he's, he's a he's a difference maker he's so good It'll be it'll be interesting. Vikings are gonna be an interesting team to watch. Is he that good of a blocker? I I have a hard time believing that. But I mean, to tell you the truth, it's kind of funny. I wish I could remember the player's name. Played for the University of Miami. He was a left tackle. He was with Kansas City for a while. He was the president. Uh, he was the president of the Players Association for for a while. Played in the NFL for like twelve to fifteen years. So he was at the University of Miami. I want to tell you this was the time that they had uh, Jeremy Shockey, uh, Kellen Winslow Jr., and uh, the third string guy. I can't remember. So I, I maybe he, he was third string. I can't remember the guy's name. So Alonzo Highsmith um, was part of the offensive coaching staff. He pulled him aside and he says, "Listen, you know you're you're a good enough tight end. You can play in the NFL for you know 12, 12 years, but." If you put on 30 pounds and move the left tackle, you can make an additional 30 million. And I wish I remember this player's name because over in his NFL career, he made over 50 million dollars. And I and I really think that somebody should have pulled. Um, I, I forgot his name already. I forgot his name. But Darnell Washington. I really feel like somebody should have took Darnell Washington aside and said, "Listen, put on 30 pounds. Forget this tight end shit." And, and be a left tackle, and he would have been a top 10 pick. And I'll die on that hill. And, and I don't think you can do that anymore. The Steelers did that. One of their starting left tackles in the 70s was a tight end, just put on weight, and they're like, you're just going to play left tackle. Um, and then the Steelers did just the opposite. Dave Casper, Hall of Fame tight end, played left tackle at Notre Dame. But he was fast and athletic enough. They're like, eh, well, let's try this tight end thing. <laughs> so... Um, uh, but he's a guy that I really I, – I don't know why uh, the Georgia coaching staff didn't – somebody didn't pull him aside and say, listen, you can be a second-string tight end, put on 30 pounds, and you're a franchise left tackle. I don't know why nobody did that. I don't know why nobody didn't do that. By the way, the, the, the highest-paid tackle is making almost twice as much – as highest paid tight end, which is not Travis Kelsey. It, it's, it's, um, 
Um, San Francisco, University of Iowa, fifth round draft pick. Ba ba ba. I I I am I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I can't think of his name. It, I didn't I didn't think it was that many, but it's a lot. Yeah. Is he that good of? Okay, okay. Flory said a lot. In my yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. John Dorsey was a single bet. I think so, man. I when every time I I see things that the Lions are doing, I'm like the Chiefs did the same things. The thing is, though, the Chiefs. I remember Dorsey just revamped that roster almost immediately, and they and it's taken the Lions a little longer. But a lot of things that happened in Kansas City, I'm seeing in Detroit, and that's why like. I'm giving Dorsey a lot of credit when maybe it should be Brad Holmes. Don Terry Poe, heaviest guy to throw a touchdown pass. <laughs> that record may be broken. That record may be broken. Uh, they, there's, there's a, there, I, I, I'll, if I find it, I'll send it to you. There's a picture of Danny Shelton throwing a pass in, in Chiefs touchdown, uh, throwing a pass in training camp. Danny Shelton is bigger than Don Terry Poe, believe it or not. Don't forget they have Landon who also played center at Bama. You know the NFL pipeline. I did. I did forget about that. I did forget. That. I did forget about Landon Dickerson, and he's really good. Tyler Lindenbaum was the name I was thinking of. Really, really. Tyler, badass. Haven't heard. Of him. I. I could. I. So it was funny because like, I. I didn't think he'd be able to play in the NFL, but yeah. Gooch Dan hasn't been excited since he. You know. I'm like the undertaker. The whisper's always there, and when I show it, to, oh, dude, I, I'm hopeful I can get you and Keys to come on. I'll, I'm gonna, I gotta send you guys the when I was on the Luke G show, and uh, Luke, Luke is. By the way, Luke's locked on my very first Tuesday show, and then the second week before the Chiefs play the Jaguars, I got UCF Jaguar. I, he's confirmed via Twitter that he's going to come on. And I'm really geeked out about that. I got like, uh, from my first two Tuesdays, I got two fantastic hosts of better or bigger YouTube channels in mine. Anyway, maybe not better, but uh, actually, actually Luke G had this like incredible Hawk thing that was popping up when I was talking about the lions. That was just fucking awesome. I, I, I I'm probably going to steal that one of these days. It was great. There was one with a, a Hutchinson Jersey. And then I, I don't remember the other number, but it was awesome. Luke G has a lot of great stuff on his channel. But I expect a trade coming from the lions on defense going to be a quarterback. I could see that man. I, I really could. I really could. I heard him mention Grover Stewart from the Colts. Oh, that would be a good one. Yannick is my Madden spirit. <laughs> I forgot Grady Jarrett is on the Lions. Are you talking about the Falcons? Or am I thinking of somebody different? I think he I think he does mostly with his left hand, but uh, I remember like when he came in, it was like it was like something because he does it a little weird, and then that they're gonna mess with it. And he's like, No, 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 you 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 do you. Well, moms will take it left-handed. I may I'm I may be making some stuff up there, but I'm pretty sure. I hope the Eagles make a move for a linebacker to pair it with Nakobe Dean, hopefully Miles Jack. LOL. <laughs> I I was floored that he didn't pan out in Pittsburgh, but they they were they were just like get rid of him. Um, yeah, because you lose Kazir White and, and you also lost TJ Edwards. TJ Edwards was very underrated. So so what the I I love that TJ Edwards assigned with the Bears. They got him and they got um another name freeze. The the um the, from from Buffalo. I'm so embarrassed. I, one of my one of my favorite players in the league. Yeah, yeah TJ Edwards signed with Chicago. Great, great sign. I miss that. To be honest, Funk, good signing for Bears to recruit to replace Roquan. Yeah, so you had TJ Edwards, and they signed a four year, eighty million dollar deal from Buffalo to get him. I can't believe I can't remember his name. One of my one of my, love this dude. 
Oh my God, Corey, aka it was funny. We was talking Kaiser White signed with uh signed with the Cardinals. So love being notified when the stream starts. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm so glad to see you, man. I got Corey, aka the Red Sea. Don't forget, a hey, next next um month I'll be back live on Tuesday. Oh, I forgot you um you bowl on Tuesday, but man, I'm glad you're here, Corey. That Hunter contract, yeah, I know. He's talking about the Hunter Hunter and Renfro contract. I know Epps went to the Raiders. I thought he had done pretty well. TJ Edwards, a serviceable linebacker. If you watch some of the games from 2022, you can tell he fed off the defensive line. I'm happy he got paid, though. Tremaine Edmonds, I'm sorry. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, he he will. And and by the way, they, like uh, that defensive tackle they got in the second round from Florida, uh, some Gavron Dexter, I believe. Massive dude. No 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 pass rush ability, but he's going to be a good player. Kittle. Why could I not remember that? I think Edmonds is a look at like the Smith replacement. Yeah, I, I mean, here's the thing: you're you're paying uh, a, a little under a hundred million for Edmonds and and Edwards, and so he's get or uh, paying them slightly less than Raquan Smith's making. But that makes Patrick Queen expendable, and I was thinking that he would be a great fit for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Luke G didn't think so, but I, I think a Patrick Queen trade makes a lot of sense. And and he's a guy I think that it, that will be on the trading block. I think there'll be an NFL team that that's looking at him. I saw a quick processor was all over the field. Yeah, I did. I I, I love TJ Edwards. I thought it was a great move. I I could I I don't know why. I think Waller. Oh, you know. Okay, so Kittle signed the 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 contract for the for the highest paid tight end. Kelsey signed like this much less. Um, I, I that's kind of surprising though. He is a great tackler, absolutely terrible. So it's really weird because TJ Edmonds, or I'm sorry, Tremaine Edmonds. I'm sorry, got too mixed up. Tremaine Edmonds they used a lot in pass coverage. He's like six four two sixty, and I and I kept on thinking that this was such a waste. You got a guy who, who's like almost the size of a defensive end and you got him covering backs and slot receivers. Like, like what the hell? But I, I think that both of these guys are going to play on passing downs, but both of these guys really, really excel at stuff on the run. And I think that's what the plan is in Chicago, but I'd be lying to you if I said I knew for an absolute fact what the Bears are game planning on defense, but that's kind of the way I see their defense with, with the massive additions on the uh, defensive line. Now you got your pass rusher. So. Dorsey stopped Holmes in year one for trading up for a few picks. Yeah, I, I it's, re it's really funny because if you follow what Dorsey did in Kansas City, um, there's a lot of the same moves. Now, the things that he did that were bad was he played hardball with Justin Houston, which blew up in his face because Houston wanted originally, he wanted those like 50 to 60 million, right? And and uh, what happened is J.J. Watt, that was the year J.J. Watt got like 100 million. So um, Houston won 50 to 60 and they're like, no. Then he blows up and has 22 and a half sacks and they have to give him over 100 million. And at the time, no linebacker made like over 60 million or something crazy like that. Because even though he was a linebacker, he they used him more as an edge rusher. And and you know, it, it was it was a nightmare. And then he played hardball with Eric Berry after he came back from cancer. And Eric Berry's like, okay, game on. And his 2016 season was the best season he ever had. It was he was phenomenal. He was all over the place. Um, he had that famous pick two play uh, that that ended up being the game winner actually uh, against Atlanta. Just phenomenal season. Then they had to pay him, and I think he played like seven plays, got like sixty million from the Chiefs, and um, the owners ownership was furious because they they were like Eric Berry's going to be a chief for life. He's going to be here, and then John Dorsey's like, no, we don't want to pay you, and and Eric Berry's like, well, okay. Fine, game on. I'm coming back from cancer better than ever. And you know, and I think people are like, yeah. And then and then once he came back, that that only for one year, then they gave him all that money and he, and he sat out the whole seasons. And there was rumors because it was like bone bone spurs in the foot, and it's like, yeah, you can probably play through that, but you're getting how much? Okay. Okay. 
So um, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as like finding players, um, oh God, yeah. First draft, um, Travis Kelsey in round three from Cincinnati. And that's all you got to know. So. Noah Gray is an underrated blocking tight end. I think Pop po, post lay. I I will know <laughs> the tight end position is really interesting because uh, I um you still got Danny Fortson. There's there's um another they they then they bring back uh Blake Bell as well. So uh, there's some interesting things going on. Noah Gray they started using him more and more as the season went on. He's he's a guy that might be uh, asking for some money in a year or two. For yeah, I I think yeah we we got you we got you. The ones that really hurt are CJ GJ and Hard Hargrave uh, leave and hopefully Carter can fill the hole. I don't know what the safety room is going to look like for Philly Week One. Yeah, and and that's another thing is that I don't think, and and again I don't know. I'm just spitballing, and it's an unfair reference, but um, I remember when the Honey Badger left Arizona. And he went to Houston for a year. And at Houston, all he did was play strong safety. They didn't move him around. Then he comes to Kansas City, and then he, he's being moved everywhere, right? And so in Philly, they used him everywhere. I don't know if they're going to just pigeonhole him at, at safety and like, hey, that's it, or if Aaron Glenn's going to get creative and start moving him all around. Um, I kind of get the impression that they're not going to use them all around, but I don't know. I I'm, I'm, I might be just making some stuff up here, but he's got such versatility. I, I, I just, um, that was such a great signing for Detroit because they signed him for one year. I think it was six or 7 million. And it's like Juan Thornhill got a three year, $21 million deal. I, I was really expecting him to get like Jesse Bates money. Jesse Bates signed, I think it was four years, 65 million. I was expecting something close to that. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know what you're going to do, but yeah, the, uh, you got, you got Carter. Um, Jordan Davis is going to play a lot more. I think Jordan Davis is going to going to rotate some in there. Carter, I, it's kind of weird because I don't think Carter's going to play a lot year one. I really don't. I think you're going to see a lot of Jordan Davis and uh, the other defensive tackle. I'm just drawing a blank list name, but yeah, yeah, a little, a little appreciate the rental. I'm glad. You, I don't get it, man. You guys didn't even him in hindsight. Brian Branch is really going to look like. Brian Branch is a guy that I I you could use him all over the place. That that guy that seriously he may not play that much this year, um, but um, he may not play that much this year. But I think once he does play, like that's a guy that may end up like he may be in the league like twelve years, go to like five or six Pro Bowls. I love that dude. I I really thought he would go to the Chargers at 21 and and they would use him next to derwin james as a safety and i was like oh shit but uh i i forgot what the chargers oh yeah chargers took um uh, a receiver which which you know good good you know but yeah that that's a that was such a great draft pick the lions are trading okay that would be a great trade uh but the thing is though atlanta is a team that's in win now mode and I really, really don't um, don't see that happening. Yeah, what was his agent doing, man? Howard from the Finns. Me, that's an, that's another team because I could see I could see um, Miami after trading uh, a first round pick to Denver and and getting <laughs> another name freeze. Uh, NC State fourth pick in the draft. Side note, he was on an episode of Bar Rescue. And, oh, God, so embarrassing. Love that dude, too. Anyway, he's in Miami. So I, I may, maybe Miami wants to give up some picks, um, especially especially if Jalen Ramsey comes back. I don't think it'd be Howard, but they got they got some other guys in the secondary they may move because they, they got a long list of corners. Some of them didn't pan out, and um, I'm I'm thinking uh, Noah Igbenabi, and I'm butchering that name. He's a former first round pick that just they they 
Flores hated him for whatever reason. Uh, you may be able to get him relatively cheap. Story about Creed is correct. Andy just didn't know he was a lefty. He was willing to snap it right, handed to Andy, and told him no. Mahomes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I thought that was true. Yeah, so he was a lefty, and in way of snapping it, it was just a little unusual. You don't think about, it, but it, it's something that if if you if you're a left-handed quarterback, every receiver will tell you it comes out a little different. You kind of got to adjust, and and Mahomes had to adjust, and 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 Andy was like, look, you you do it your way. Mahomes is going to adjust, and yeah. Not didn't know. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't sound like much. So, did I really get a name right? <laughs> Slasher, we're about to have a real nice dime package. Walker and Joseph Deep, mostly Jacob Sutton on the outside. CJ, GJ, and Branch in the box. Yeah, and we just need to adjust. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. CJ, GJ back. I thought we no, 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 no. So, so he went down. Uh, he's okay. He's are actually he's already back at practice. So a uh, five six of these. <laughs> yeah, I love Brian Branch. I was positive. I was positive he was not getting past the Chargers. And every mock draft I did, I'm thinking the Chargers at 21, that's where he's gonna go because uh they had Nasir Adderley. Um, he retired. He was like 24 or 25. He retired from football. And he, he, he didn't – to tell you the truth, he was the second-round pick out of Delaware, uh, played corner and safety. Some teams thought he could play at corner. The Chargers played him at free safety. And he was good, not great. He was okay. And um, it was kind of surprised they retired. So they didn't – I don't think they signed a replacement in free agency. So when, when Brian Branch was was there at 21, I'm like, okay, let's – shit. You know, guy, we're dirty. You know, because he could, he could play corner. He could play safety. He could play in the box. And and they went wide receiver. And then they took my – they took uh, Quentin Jefferson. I think that's his name. The receiver out TCU. He's my number one wide receiver. But it was, it was just strange because – um, they got three good receivers already. So, uh, Demario, yeah, Demario Davis makes a lot of sense. It really, it really does. But because uh, I know they got they they drafted a couple linebackers, so yeah. Um. You, you know, Gooch, I, I say this every year. I'm going to try not to say it anymore. But, um, you know, I was going to lead off because I wanted to talk about the college football realignment. If you're not aware, I got the article pulled up here. Oregon and Washington's going to join the Big Ten. Uh, so they're, they're going to they're going to join the Big Ten with UCLA and USC and the Big 12's bringing in Utah and and Arizona State, which means the Pac-12 is going to uh, just just you know fall apart. But the, I, I wish I could find this article. So the plan the SEC had, and they've been doing this for a long time, is they wanted to go from 12 to 16 because they want to do the NFL model where you have four 14 divisions, and then all four of those get a spot, and then they play each other in a Final Four SEC. Uh, tournament and it would be a great move it would be a great move and that's that's been in the works for a long time and i'm kind of thinking that uh well the big 10 which is going to be with with um oregon and washington they're going to have 18 uh i have no idea what they're going to do and the, the big 12 which will be 16 i think that they're going to stick i think both those want to stick with like two conferences but i know the sec and and i wish you could find this because i read this a long time ago is that the sec really wants to do an nfl format with four four team divisions but how do you do that if you have 18 and and i, and I don't think the big 12 is is trying to do four four team divisions i think they're gonna have two eight team divisions and then uh, the big 12 i think is going to stick with you know 18 unless they add two and then go to 20, but what do you do with 20? You know, five, four team divisions. I'm sorry, four, five team divisions. Maybe. I don't know. Uh college football's becoming weird becoming weird. And um 
It's kind of I'm kind of sad that the Pac-12 is just dissolving. It's just falling apart. But I do like the idea of Utah coming coming to the the Big Twelve. For those of you that don't know, uh, Utah and and TCU were longtime rivals in the old Mountain West Conference. So it'll be kind of a neat new rivalry in the Big Twelve. So Gucci was contact. He was back on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. Jonathan Allen. Oh. I don't think so. He just signed a contract. Um, it, it won't be this year, but next year, because I think that what you're going to see is that uh, they have a new ownership group in Washington. Rivera is the general manager and head coach. That's not going to work. So uh, I think next year you could see like you could see something drastic happen with Washington. But this year I don't see it because uh, Ron Riviera still has player control and they just signed him to a, to a deal not too long ago. Okay, all I remember was the notification when I was in a meeting. Sorry, Funky. Uh, great, two of them here. Stay. <laughs> While you two were here, tell us your impressions of Justin Ross roasting his Bama. <laughs> Slasher would be a 3 2 5 Pascal Kaminsky and McNeil on the line in Houston and Hutch screaming off the edges. It could work well in pass downs. I uh, really gooch January 7th, 2019 national championship game 46. Ouch. Jerry Judy, Tua was horrible. Yes, he was. And Keys, you know my stance on Tua. <laughs> and the trio, Najee Harris and Jacobs just wasn't working out. God, what what a what a what a great match. What a great trio, though. No worries, Gooch, and reporting uh, when it happened was more about being the first to tell the story rather than being accurate. Yeah, this happens a lot, This ha unfortunately. Uh, no worries, Gooch, the reporting – oh, I'm sorry. It's it's everything uh, all the time in that industry, Funk, as you know. Yeah, the, uh, the media. I Yeah, I, I got I, – I, I, <laughs> Oh, God, oh, God. I understand the assignment, <laughs> they, Yeah, Chubb. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I love this dude. I love this dude. Yeah, I, 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 um, yeah. Dan, you're just going. <laughs> oh God. Oh God, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to start doing that. I need to bring out, a, a, I need to have an ESPN depth chart and start making sure I get the names. Yeah. Uh, what we're not discussing are accurate. I wasn't addressed. <laughs> oh, and the Packers were on the clock in the second. I thought they would take Branch. Definitely didn't expect them uh, to trade to us. Uh, Quentin Johnson, yeah. It's it's actually it's actually eighteen. I thought it was twenty, but it's eighteen. And yeah, they got um, Rutgers and they got USC. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. So Dan is forgetting a lot of names tonight. I'm wondering what's in the cup this this time. It's just coffee. Uh, it, it's it's um, it's been a long week, man. It's been a long week. It's it's uh it's it's been a long week, man. Uh but I, I'm I'm I look forward to doing this, but then I have some name freezes and I get embarrassed. But yeah. Um but the Lions want to move the needle trade for Lattimore tomorrow. I, I do expect the Lions to make a move, and I don't know where or for who or what, but I, I think come to trade deadline, I think the Lions are definitely a team. And a big part of that is the trade deadline comes right before the bye week. So the bye is Halloween, and, and that's just right after week eight. The Lions have a bye week nine. So you, you're going to have, if you make a move at the trade deadline, you're going to give them two weeks basically to get a player implemented into their scheme. And if you get somebody like Lattimore Davis, who, which if you guys remember, uh, Aaron Glenn and, and Dan Campbell come, come from the Saints. So if you get a former Saint, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So yeah. That's just the way that's just the way it's going. Um 
I was actually going to try to lead off and, and I just didn't. Um, but yeah, I was going to lead off with that because that that's just kind of the way that we're going is um, we're just going super conferences in college football. Uh, the SEC is going to go to 16. Um, you got, was it 18 in the big 10 and 16 in the big 12? Um, I think the ACC now has 14. Um, it, it, it looks like um, the way it looks like you're going to have four super conferences and you have the American conference, which is the former big, e, big East and um, conference USA. And then you're going to have the, the Mac, which nobody really pays attention to. And then you're going to have uh, the mountain West mountain West, very underrated uh, conference. That's really fun. Cause they, they would have some really entertaining, fun games like at, uh, in, in the Midwest or you're, you're on the East coast. So like for you, it'd be like 11 o'clock midnight. You know, because all their games would be, they would start seven, eight local time, which is, you know, in the Pacific time zone. But there there would be some good games, man. I, I remember San Diego State just had, like, all these stud running backs. They had Rashad Penny. The guy that replaced him set, like, the NCAA all-time rushing record. It was like he almost hit 7,000 yards. Um, he was, like, 170 pounds. <laughs> I ended up a, a fourth-round pick to the Eagles. And I don't think he ever played it down in the NFL. I think he got hurt and just, you know, never panned out. Also, they, they I, I want to say this was not too long ago. I want to say Boston Scott came like he was an undrafted free agent, just like started lighting things up in training camp. And I think he may have took his spot. And he was on IR because he was a fourth round pick and they just couldn't find find the use for him. But. Expect brand and, and what he's talking about Brian Branch and that was that was a guy that I was so convinced would go in the first round. I was even thinking the Patriots at fourteen may want to take him because of his versatility. But um, yeah, I, I really I really thought when the Lions picked him up, I was like, holy shit! Because you got a one year contract on CJGJ, so so basically Branch, you could almost redshirt that dude. Uh, but you could play them both together. I, I think Branch is a guy that could actually play outside and he could play corner too. So so will Clemson have two best off-ball linebackers in the draft, Barrett Carter and Trotter Jr.? I'm already going to say it. Carter's my draft coach this year. I have a t- – you, you know what? Please keep me informed because I've been hearing a lot about Barrett Carter already. And I'm, I always say I'm going to try to watch more college football – Honestly, I'm probably only going to get to watch 60, 70 games, maybe. I, I'm just, I mean, oh, yeah. All right, I got to go ahead and talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, girl, you have a great night. Uh, you just, you, um, you got my number. You can give me a call anytime. I love this girl. She's married, by the way, guys. She's married, by the way. But Trotter Jr. is an eagle. They'll make sure that. For those of you who don't know, um, I just mentioned his first name. Is it Jermaine Trotter, former former Eagles linebacker? Really, really good player. Really, really good player. Really, really, really good player. Uh, so you can have Trotter and we can get Carter and we're both happy then. Sounds good, Glenn. <laughs> Uh, so I've never been a fan of Okuda, but I feel kind of bad for him. Did anybody see if he's out for a while? I, I don't think it's it's a long time. I think it's just the, uh, I think he hadn't injured. I think he was uh, injured um, briefly, but I don't know the final word. I don't think it was a major injury, though. I don't think it was a major injury. Could be wrong. Grady Jarrett is another guy. Um so here's the deal. Atlanta's in kind of a win now mode. Um, head coach and general manager. So I, I don't think a move like that happens uh, unless the owner makes forces it. And Atlanta's not, I, I just I don't see it um, just just for a pick. Um, but uh, he's he's a guy that um, Make, makes a lot of sense down the line. And the reason why is he, he's somebody who's 30, really talented on a bad team. I think Atlanta's a team that could really surprise people. Um, you're going to play in week three. We're going to find out. So, 
Yeah, USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, and Maryland, and Rutgers is a brutal span of time zones for the Big Ten plus. <laughs> Dude, it, seriously, Rutgers is in Jersey, right? UCLA is in Southern California. I mean, you're you're. It, it seriously, it, it's it's insane. It's it's insane. Um, I I I don't. I mean, ser- I mean, I I don't get it. Um. You know, actually, I forgot Maryland's now in the Big Ten, too. I was thinking they're still in the ACC. I got my conferences mixed up. Um, Drawing a blank, which which conference Syracuse is in. Syracuse is is in the ACC. Syracuse is in the ACC. Maryland's in the Big Ten. And Rutgers is in the Big Ten. Yeah, it's it's an insane thing. And, you know, seriously, what they should do is um, play like a neutral – site like kansas city it that would be awesome you know play play a play a game at arrowhead saturday afternoon you know split the difference you know have it have a 3 p.m game at, at arrowhead so but yeah it, it it's going to be weird man um you know having the southeast conference with with you know Kentucky and Missouri and Texas A&M I thought was strange, but um, yeah, the Big Ten plus 10. <laughs> yeah. Oh, de- <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I probably shouldn't share this story, but years and years and years ago, Years and years and years ago, I had a married girlfriend. We'll not do it again. We'll not do it. it it's a long story. It was a long story. I I, I was dating her. Uh, uh, anyway, I was dating her before she was married. I'll, I'll cut it at that. But no, I will not do that again. No. But hey, girl, hey, girl is is married, and um, and she's awesome. Uh, but you can see Lattimore and Davis. The most, absolutely, I could, especially Davis because I know the is Pete Warner and some other linebacker they drafted. They've been they've been thinking about this for a while. The Saints have, and and Demario Davis he turns thirty five in January. He, he's going to finish the season at thirty five, and it kind of just makes sense. It, it kind of just makes sense. Um, Lattimore I think signed a contract it, that might be. Lattimore would be expensive. I'll be honest with you. I don't see Lattimore, but Davis does make sense because I they they they've been drafting linebackers for uh, for a while. They got Pete Warner and somebody else, and I I can't think of who it is. You know what? I didn't think about it, but yeah, Iowa does have a travel advantage. But it's it's going to be crazy. I I just I feel kind of bad because I, I just remember that Pac-12 conference. Um, you know, USC, of course, all those national championships. Oregon had some really, really good teams. Um, I forget, I forget who it was. Um, no, no, it was Funk. Funk was uh, putting comments in the video about uh, the Clemson quarterback is now at um, Oregon State, and I and I told him they got they got some good quarterbacks in the Pac-12, which is soon going away. So, no. They signed Vita Veda to a, to a big time deal. They signed him to a big time deal not too long ago. Um, Tampa Bay is going to be an interesting team because I, I I think a lot of people feel like they're just going to fall apart and that they could have just a fire sale blow up that team. So. Uh, <laughs> Zach Wilson learned. <laughs> oh, God. Not everything. Learn Bertha's and cracks and mills from Dan, but the psychedelic tea and hating isolating from family. From <laughs> DJ, go ahead. They say Smith. <laughs> It's DJ. Yeah, yeah. So so Funk was telling me because I, I saw something where um I was almost convinced um I he was gonna play minor league ball for the Dodgers. 
Rutgers. And apparently, instead of that, he's going to go to uh, Oregon State and play. And me, me, you, me, and Funk were chatting about it because I remember watching him as a true freshman at at, uh, at Clemson versus Notre Dame. I was like, "Oh my God, this this guy's a first round draft pick. This is this is a big dude." Now, apparently, he slimmed down, but he's, he's still like two thirty five. He's got a really good arm. He's mobile. But the thing I like most about him is his, it's his first college start. It's it's national television. It's against Notre Dame, and it, it was just, you know, he, he was just he, he didn't look like anything got to him. And in year two, it just like it he got so much worse. It was, I, I thought maybe he was hurt. Um, I know Clemson lost some players, but uh, and then he lost the starting job. They got a uh, whoever replaced him looks awesome. They got this white boy running back at Clemson. Oh my God, he's he's a Heisman candidate. Um, real good player. Um, but yeah, I, I'd have no idea why his his play just dropped so much. I I couldn't figure out why. I I don't think it's coaching. Um, I want to say his injuries, but you never know. I I mean it, it it's just. I, I can't think off the top of my head of a college freshman who looked so good go from looking like he was going to be a top first round pick to a guy that like couldn't even start. I mean, it, it, I, I don't remember a time where I've ever seen anybody like that. Uh, but I'm I, I'm going to try. Again, here I am making promises I'm not going to keep. I, I'm oh, I'm going to watch him play uh, at Oregon State. I'm going to DVR the game. Yeah, I probably won't have time. Um, if he doesn't have a good year, he can fall back on baseball. I mean, you know, he can play baseball for 15 years and not be as beat up. So he does have all the tools. He does have all the tools. I mean, big, strong, fast. And he's from, I know he's from California. So, I mean, you know, it's not that far away. That might be part of it. Uh, I have no idea. Cade Klubik at court. Will Shipley at running backs, right? And he looks awesome. Um, I don't know. Is it racist to me to call a white guy slow? Maybe. So here I'm being racist against white people. But the running back, um, Looks special in college. I don't know if he has what it takes to be like a, a first round caliber running back, but he looks really, really good. Uh, the quarterback looked good. I think he was a true freshman, um, maybe a redshirt freshman. But he's young. Clemson has Clemson has some good players. They have some. They have some good players. The running backs a Heisman, a legitimate Heisman candidate, a legit Heisman candidate. Clueback looks amazing. Dude through like a seven. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's he's a guy that. I, I think I want to say he's a sophomore. I don't know if he's a redshirt sophomore, but he's a guy that in a year or two from now we could be talking about. Um, the kid out of North Carolina, is they're talking about him being a top five pick. Of course, Caleb Williams trying to be back-to-back Heisman winner. I don't, I don't see it happening. Um, not because he's not talented enough, not because USC – may not win 11, 12 games. It's just that um, it, it hasn't happened in such a long time. I think I think Heisman voters legitimately don't want to see a two-time winner. I, I just don't think they do. I really don't think they do. And um, I think you have to just – he has to do more. And, and to be honest, I mean, th- that USC team's loaded, and the schedule's not overly difficult. Um, Bo Nix out of, out of Oregon's another guy that could go in the first round. He's also going to be a Heisman candidate as well. But, but I mean, you know, seriously, I could probably name about 15 to 20 Heisman candidates. I sat down and thought about it. Would Will Shipley out, out of Clemson, definitely a Heisman candidate. Caleb Williams, of course, won Heisman last year and uh, Bo Nix out of Oregon. He's another guy. So. I don't know if Shiplow get it because Williams exists. I need him to win to jack up our trade. <laughs> oh, God, that's a good one. 
Oh, you're going to, you know, seriously, I, you're going to cheer against the Houston Texans all year. So, uh, I, I, Corey, stay in touch with me. Uh, when the draft comes around, me and you are going to talk. Um, me and Denver Gator are going to talk about um, two name freezes. Two name freezes. Um, Matt Bowers, the Georgia tight end, against now with the Atlanta Falcons. So we're going to talk about that, but I have to remember their names first. I keep hearing all these affidavits to say this or that college player or before they were in college were betting on games in their mama's phones outside of being an idiot who tells someone, how could they even know the place in those bets? Yeah. Yeah. Brock. Bauer, yeah. Me, me and Denver Gator uh, are going to do the uh, draft special. And of course I have to get the names right. But um, Kyle Pitts is the best tight end I've ever seen coming out of college football. Then Brock Bowers comes along, and it's like, oh, well, his name was Matt, but, you know, I am with names. But um, I've seen a few mock drafts already that think that he could go top five, maybe even number three overall. There's a lot of um, – God, how do I how – do I, So um, – there, there's, there, it's, it's, it, everything's very trackable now when, when you, when you place the bets and everything. That, that's the reason why. Now, Calvin Ridley, his screen name was like Calvin Ridley, um, num number eight. It, it was like he even had his number on there. It was really stupid, but, um, it, it's pretty easy to track as far as gambling is concerned. Cause I mean, you have to put in the bank account number and if the bank account number doesn't match up, they won't accept it in the first place. Um, I know because I, I have an account with my bookie. Now my, my bookie was legal in Kansas because it's an offshore account, but they have to verify it. Uh, the easiest way to use my, my bookie is through cryptocurrency, and I this is not going to be a cryptocurrency show, but um, basically cryptocurrency is, is extremely trackable. That's one of the things about Bitcoin is that some people say, oh, you pay Bitcoin, you're No, it's very trackable. I mean, you know, however much of Bitcoin you have is, is tracked, you have to have your name and all the information on it. But um, and that's for an offshore account. That's for an offshore account. Like my bookie is an offshore account. That's why I live in Kansas and it's legal for me to use Bitcoin. You can also use um, a checking account, but there's all sorts of fees associated with it. I put $300 into my bookie and after all the fees and charges end up being like 325. So uh, I started using Bitcoin. So, and I, I haven't even looked, I think I still got like 50 or 20 bucks, something like that. Now you got me one. Actually, I may have already made a bet on on the NFL season. I I've been so scatterheaded lately. But it, it's very it's it's very easy to track. Believe it or not, it's very easy to track. You have to put in all this detailed information about uh, uh, the bank or or if you use you know Bitcoin, it, it, you have to do all that. So keys again. It's it's not first to be accurate. First to get. <laughs> Uh, Bowers is a legit top 10 pick. That will go top three or five. So this quarterback class and obvious. Yeah, so the, the mock draft I saw was Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Bowers. One, two, three. And I'm like, I'm like, God. And, and, uh, and I'm telling you right now, if Arizona, let's just say for fun, Arizona does have the number one pick in the draft during a trade. Um. But yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun draft, and hopefully, I can do something with you. Denver Gators agreed to do a Kyle Pitts, Kyle Pitts versus Bowers, um, kind of one one go back and forth. Now, don't now keep in mind I'm going to take Bowers because he's a Florida guy, um, and I think Pitts is still going to be a better prospect because I don't see Bowers doing a four four one at the combine. So we'll wait and see. I guess we just figured out what those are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvin Harrison is insane. And he's ours. 
<laughs> well, you, you know, I would, I would, you know, it would be kind of cool if the Houston Texans just do terrible and, and you guys pick one and two in the draft. But uh, I think, I think seriously, when it comes down to it, I, I think you're going to have that, that Texans pick is probably going to be a top 15 pick. I don't think you guys are going to have the number one pick in the draft. I really don't. I, I think Kyler Murray is going to come back healthy. I think you guys got a lot more pieces in play. And I've been loving the stuff you've been sending me uh, about Jonathan Gannon and those pressers. Um, he, he, he's look, he, he, it, it looks good so far. So I don't think you're going to have the number one pick in the draft. I, I don't know who is. I mean, I would have said Arizona um, a couple months ago, but, you know, Kyler Murray comes back week one. I mean, I would. And you you missed it, by the way. Keith said, give me the number one team that would trade for Jonathan Taylor. And I said, well, Arizona, you got an extra first, third and fifth round pick. But I don't think Ursay is going to trade them. But if I'm Arizona, I'd, I'd be like, you know what? You got some draft capital. What do you want? And and I, th I think Jonathan Taylor to Arizona would, would would. I think it would be a good move. I really do. I really do. Uh, guys, I've been on for about uh, two and a half hours. Um, I'm already forgetting names. I'm going to wrap up here. If anybody's got any final thoughts or questions, uh, I'll fire them out. By the way, all my social media links are below. Corey sent me some great stuff. Um, one, one pride sends me some great stuff. James, uh, as me and James been DMing each other, um, me and keys, we hit each other up on Twitter. I'm going to hit him up. Um, with uh what when i was on the luke g show so um he, he can hear some of the things and by the way i do have it confirmed luke g will be on um my first tuesday show my second tuesday show it will be uh uh ucf jaguar and i'm hoping to have some more guests it, it's going to be just just phenomenal phenomenal it's okay. You can have them. Uh, where the Lions will be picking Barrett Carter will do just fine. Replace Enzalonia a year after learning behind him. That's not, that would not be bad. That would not. Would you? Let me ask you this. Let's say you don't make any moves in the draft. All right. Would you be okay with using back to back first round picks on on off ball linebackers? Just just ask him. If I'm Monty, I'm not trading draft capital for a running back. I'll just have to pay top dollar to literally that next off season. Um, I, 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 um, I get that. A lot of people feel that way, but if you had to say, give me a team that makes sense for Jonathan Taylor to go to, I'm kind of looking at Arizona because I got those extra draft picks, but you're right. If you do trade for them, uh, you got to find a way to give them a lot of money. And I, I just think that if I have a, quarterback that I want to protect coming off of the major injury. Um, I, I kind of like the idea of having a superstar er, and I keep in mind, he looked, he looked like he was going to be really, really special. And then last year he was just really banged up. So is there a scenario where the Cardinals get to draft Harrison and Pew Pew Stacey? <laughs> yes. And that's if the Houston Texans are god awful. And then keep in mind, uh, the Houston Texans are given Arizona the first and third round picks of this draft, and they get the fifth round pick from the Eagles. So they already got 10 draft picks. So they have a lot of draft capital. So the answer is yes, but I, I think it would be um, Houston just doing awful. And and, uh, and and I I don't know I mean you got you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a, a rookie quarterback a first time head coach and they also would need Will Anderson to do really well and keep in mind he played outside linebacker and he's switching to defensive end and, and a lot of people say edge rusher but it's it's a little it's a, it's a little more nuanced than that and he is going from Alabama to to the NFL and even though there's been a lot of great players from from. Alabama, you know, they're they're asking a lot. So so the situation would could possibly be Houston just has a god awful first year and here you go, you're Arizona and you don't even need to trade. Excuse me. Okay. I, I'm not, I'm just asking. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying one one I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just kind of curious cuz a lot of people would not want to use back-to-back -back first round picks on an off-ball linebacker. However, that that kid's special. 
I, I don't know too much about him, to be honest with you. I've just I've seen a lot of talk about him uh, almost definitely being a first round pick if he if he just kind of keep stays the course. So, oh, two and a half hours. Dan must have snorted a lot of Bertha crack pre. <laughs> oh God. Okay. On that note, we are going to end things. Guys, thank you so much for joining. I will be on next week. Have a fantastic weekend. By the way, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. Share the video. I'm almost at 1,100, and I will see you guys next week.